Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to call to order this meeting pursuant to the Texas Open Meetings Act. This is a regular meeting of the Commissioner's Court of Hood County, Texas. Today is Tuesday, July 14th, 2020. It's 9 a.m. We're in the Century Jury Room of the Hood County Justice Center at 1200 West Pearl Street, Granbury, Texas. Today, thanks to Dr. Bill Miller of the Pastor Council, he has brought with us again Pastor Scott Goodfellow of the First United Methodist Church to give the invocation. We're pleased to have you. Thank you for coming, Pastor Goodfellow. Thank you, Judge. Would you pray with me? Gracious and holy God, we thank you so much for your presence in this place this morning. We thank you for those who have been called to lead our community. We ask that you invoke your Holy Spirit in this place and that you grant wisdom and discernment to this body. We give you thanks for the hearts of service that these men carry, and we ask that, that those hearts are dedicated to the goodwill of the people. Lord God, we ask that you bless them. We ask that you bless those that are here. We ask that you bless the citizens of Granbury and of Hood County. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Judge. Please join me in the uh, Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, under God indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Texas flag, honor, honor the, Texas the Texas flag. flag. I, I pledge allegiance to the Texas, one state, state under God, God one and indivisible. <laughs> okay, this is my favorite part of Commissioner's Court today because we have a very special presentation to a very special young lady. This, I'd like to read this proclamation first very briefly. It's not that long. Please indulge me. This is an official proclamation and it states, whereas social hostessing allows home for harmful consumption of alcohol amongst minors by the assistance of those who are legal age. And whereas the definition and laws against social hostessing varies across state lines, however, the primary purpose is to deter underage drinking parties and gatherings where adults knowingly allow minors to drink alcohol or alcoholic beverages. And whereas in Texas, nearly one third of all alcohol related fatal crashes involve a driver under the age of 25. And whereas young people who start drinking before age 15 are six times more likely to develop alcohol dependence or abuse than those who start drinking at age 21 or older. And whereas it is imperative that visible unified prevention education efforts by community members be launched to reduce alcohol use by underage youth in private settings. Now therefore, I, Ron Massingill, County Judge, Hood County, Texas, do hereby proclaim the year 2020 as a time to bring awareness and discourage social hosting. Parents, senior citizens, young adults, businesses, law enforcement agencies, and governmental officials are encouraged to join in efforts of the Hood County Substance Abuse Council, Hood County Public Health Authority, and Pecan Valley Centers by demonstrating a commitment to a more responsible and safe community by spreading awareness and discouraging the act of social hostessy. Presented to Michaela Roach, given under my hand and seal on this, the 14th day of July, 2020, by Ron Massengill, Hood County Judge. I'm so proud of Michaela. She's done this on several times. So we're gonna have Michaela come down and we're gonna, I'm gonna present this to her. And let's do it right in front of the... All right. 
That's right. You can sit right, come out right here. Okay. Next. How about that? You want to see my come on, mask what, on, one on each side. <laughs> yeah, then they're going to go. Come on, Bruce, up here. <laughs> you, okay. I'll stand here next to her. <laughs> I don't know if I should smile or not. Should I keep my mask on or take it off? Take it off. Just take it. Hold your breath. You need to see your face. Are you going to see We're going to have this one's job here, too. Come on. Okay. Are you going to come up here, or is this, is this your sister? Yes. She is also part of Team Mad. She's one of our officers. Well, good. So. It's nice to see you. Why don't you come <laughs> here, too? So you can tell they favor it, and that's their good-looking mother back there. Oh, oh. wait. Wait. Is that it? <laughs> Just hold it. Awesome. Good deal. Thank you both. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Congratulations to you. Thank you. Thank you. Good I to see you again. Good to see you too. We're off to a good start now. We've had a good prayer, the pledge, two good pledges, and good deal. Now, the next thing I, is on our agenda is the citizens' comments pertaining to agenda items. If anybody would like to speak on anything that's on the agenda, if you go back to Sheriff Deeds there, he's got public participation forms that you can fill out, and then you can hand them to my good buddy Dean here, the second in command, and he will then give them to me and at the appropriate time we will call and you can come up here and speak for maybe three minutes with the exception of UK. We will give you three and a half minutes to speak. Okay. Now, does any of the commissioners wish to remove or pull anything from the consent agenda? Okay. Is there a motion to approve the consent agenda? I'll make a pro uh, motion to approve consent agenda. I'll second. Motion has been made and second to approve the consent agenda. Is there any further discussion? If not, all those in favor of approving the consent agenda say aye. 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 All opposed, nay. Motion carries three to zero. By the way, you probably noticed that we're miss missing two of our commissioners here this morning. Uh, Commissioner Deaver, Precinct 1, and Commissioner Cotton of Precinct 2, and it's because they are ill at the present time, and so we didn't want them infected. This is dangerous times, isn't it? Really weird times. I asked Pastor Miller and Pastor Goodfellow today, whatever the lesson is the good Lord's trying to teach us with this COVID deal, I've got it. I'd just like to move on from here, but anyway. Okay. The first item of business here under business to be discussed is the road operations, and we are now going to open the commissioner's court into a public hearing. Mr. Don Lenny. Good morning, Judge Massengill, commissioners. We have quite a few uh, signage for traffic regulations on this one and if it pleases the court we can do them all in under the same public hearing. Uh, the first one is to place a stop sign on Eastview Terrace on South Harbor Drive. Uh, this uh, request was from some citizens in South Harbor. Uh, it, Eastview simply tees into Grand Harbor uh, or South Harbor Drive but evidently some citizens are not stopping they're just they're going so uh, that request is on there. The next one we have actually set in two public, uh, two stop signs on Northgate, and this is at the intersection with Enchanted Road, and the other side is Main Street. Uh, this has come about from the DPS. Uh, they've had numerous accidents. This area has really grown uh, just in the last two years, and so there's a lot of traffic in this area now, which kind of leads down to the, the third one that we have is a reduce the speed limit. All these roads are currently at 30 miles per hour, but it has become, in, in, a, in a sense, it's a neighborhood now. So uh, we're requesting to go ahead and, and reduce that from 30 miles an hour to 25 miles an hour. Okay. But looking at all the road operations, uh, recommends approving all of these uh, regulations, okay. traffic regulations. 
Is there any discussion on any of the items that have been addressed by Mr. Don Lenny? Yeah, Judge, I'll uh, talk about uh, items two and three. Uh, I have I've been approached by uh, law, law enforcement officers and uh, uh, other uh, residents in the area. Uh, the the uh, intersection has become a, a, a get, has become dangerous, and then. Uh, so, you know, I asked Donald to look into putting, making this into an all-way uh, stop intersection and then reducing the speeds. There's so, this, uh, in this one particular subdivision out there, there's so many uh, cars that are coming through it, they're using it for a uh, cut through. And uh, so I asked him to uh, uh, lower the speed limit from 30 to 25 miles an hour. Okay. Any further discussion? Okay. All right. I'm going to close the public hearing now and go back into the commissioner's court. And do I hear a motion regarding the road operations that in proposed traffic regulations as stated by Don Lenny? Yes, Judge. I'll make a motion to approve item one, two, three, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and H. I'll second that, yeah. Okay, motion been made and second. Made by Commissioner Bruce White, seconded <clears throat> by Commissioner Dave Eagle to approve the proposed traffic regulations as stated. All those in favor, say aye. Aye. All opposed, nay. Motion carries 3-0. Okay, development. You're going to take over for Mr. Head? Yes, Your Honor. He, he hit text. He's not going to be able to make it this morning, so he asked me to go ahead and, and, and do his. Okay, well, uh, let me go ahead then, and I'm going to open into a public hearing for the development into a public hearing, okay? Your Honor, this first public hearing has to do with the replat and Bentwater. It's, it's combining lots 385R and 387 creating a three and a quarter acre lot called lot 385R1. Property is located within the water quality district in precinct number four and is served by public water and an OSSF. Staff has reviewed this, this replat and had made comments and had those returned and makes a, a recommendation of approval for this replat. Bent water on Lake Granbury, section two, lot 385R1. That's presented. Okay. Okay, you want to do the other ones all at the same and then go into and do this all at one time, or do you want to open and close on each one? Okay. Whatever places the court. What, can we do that to just hear all of them and then close? I, I, uh, yeah. Go ahead, Mr. Lenny, okay. we, with the next one. Number Your two. Honor, the second one that's uh, under this public hearing is the uh, involves Combining 805R and a portion of 807R, this creates a three and eight tenths acre lot called 805R1. And then they're turning around and taking the remainder of 807R, combining it with 808R and lot 1783, creating a four and nine tenths acre lot called 807R1. This replat is located in the water quality district in precinct two. It's served by public water and also an OSSF on this one. Staff has reviewed this replat as well and makes a recommendation to approve Pecan Plantation Unit 8, lots 805R1 and 807R1 as presented. Our third one is the site development, site development plant for uh, the, Pecan, or the Fall Creek RV Park. This property is located at 5121 Fall Creek Highway and will be on lot two, block one of the Lusk Branch Edition. This site development plan is located in the Water Quality District and will be served by both public water and wastewater. If the court remember back in March, uh, these develop, this <coughs> process started, began with uh, coming to the court for a, a variance to the densities and the court granted that variance at that time. This, this site will propose 68 RV spaces 
with 102 parking spaces. We do have letters, letter from AMUD saying they can they can serve this this community with, without any problem. So the staff has uh, reviewed this and does make also make a recommendation to approve this uh, Fall, Fall Creek RV Park site development plan. We have any further discussion on either one of these three items? If not. I'm going to go ahead and close the public hearing and open up into the commissioner's court. So now that we have the three motions, let's go ahead and vote on them one at a time. Then uh, the motion to consider the replatted bent water on Lake Granbury section two, lot 385R1. Do I have a motion to approve that replat? Yes, Judge, I'll make the motion to approve that replat uh, bent water on Lake Granbury, Section 2, Lot 385 R1, as recommended by Mr. Lenny. Second. Second. Okay, motion has been made in second. Commissioner second by Commissioner White to approve the Lot 385 R1. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries 3 0. Second public hearing to approve the following replant at Pecan Plantation. As stated there, do I hear the appropriate motion? Yeah, I'll, I'll be happy to make this motion. Uh, mo uh, make a motion to approve a replat on Pecan, Pecan Plantation Unit 8, lots 805-R1 and 807-R1 as presented this morning. Second. Second. Second by Commissioner White to approve Pecan Plantation Unit 8 lots as stated therein. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries through zero. Next, the public hearing to consider the re, uh, site development plan at Fall Creek Highway, the RV park, is that correct? Yes, sir. And it, you've got all the improvements, we can do all of it and handle it just fine. We're was, good to go. Okay, yes, sir. Okay, good. Do I hear an appropriate motion? Yes, Judge, I'll make a motion to approve the site development plan for uh, item A, Fall Creek RV Park, Precinct 3. I'll second. Motion made by Commissioner White to approve the site development plan at the Fall Creek RV Project, second by Commissioner Eagle. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries 3-0. Thank you very much, Mr. Lenny. Thank you, Judge. Okay. Now we have the financial, Ms. Becky Kidd. Good morning, Judge and Commissioners. For this court, you have payments in the amount of $625,469.43. You've been given copies of these invoices. You've also received a spreadsheet regarding payments over $10,000. The auditor's office has reviewed all these payments and recommends, recommends paying these bills. Do you have any questions? Okay. Any further discussion? Is there here a motion? Yeah, I'll make a motion to approve the, and pay the bills of $625,469.43. Second. Second. Made by Commissioner Eagle to approve payment of the bills the amount of $625,469.43. Second by Commissioner White. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries 3-0. Got anything else, Ms. Kidd? Uh, three more items. We ask that you accept the 2020 review of the Justice of the Peace Precinct 3 financial records. We've reviewed these records and see no issues with this department. It's a clean report. We ask that you accept it. Okay. All right. You recommend uh, accepting Precinct 3's financial records, correct? Yes, sir. Okay. Do I hear appropriate motion? Yes, Judge. I'll make a motion to accept the uh, acknowledging accept the 2020 review of Justice of the Peace Precinct 3 financial records. I'll second. Okay, motion made by Commissioner White to accept the 2020 review of Justice of the Peace Precinct 3 financial records. All those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries 3 0. Next <laughs> item. 
is the 2020 review of the Justice of the Peace Precinct 4 financial records, and we have no issues with these reports. Everything was in order. Another clean report. We recommend acceptance. Okay. Okay. Any further discussion? I hear a motion. I make a motion. We accept the 2020 review of Justice of the Peace Precinct 4's financial records. I second that motion. Okay. Motion has been made and second to approve. <coughs> The 2020 Review of Justice of the Peace Precinct 4 Financial Records. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries 3-0. <coughs> All right, item number four. Next is the 2020 Review of the District Clerk's Financial Records. The main issue with this is the overage in her DRO checking account of $62,235.57. This has been reported in prior years. We just ask that she research this, see where this money actually goes. It does not belong in that account. And we hope that she gets on that really soon. So you're asking for approval of everything except for the... Well, approval of it with the knowledge that she needs to research this and to try to find out where this money belongs. We've been in discussions about that and we hope that she will help us out here. Okay, so a full uh, acceptance of the 2020 review of the district clerk's offices, except you want uh, our district clerk to review yes, the sir. one item and find out what, where it should appropriately go? Yes, sir. Okay. Do I hear an appropriate motion? Okay. I hear a second. Second. Okay. Motion has been made by Commissioner White to accept the 2020 review of District Clerk's financial records fully, but asking the District Clerk to research one line item of $62,000 plus to find out where it should be appropriately listed. And we'll be happy to help her if she needs us to. Okay, and that you will help her with that. Okay. This has been. Uh, then second by Commissioner White. Oh, Del. You right, would think you, I'd get it right since only three of us <laughs> up here, but I get lost in that long motion up here. Second by Commissioner Eagle. Okay. All okay, second. I'm second. Second by Commissioner Eagle. <laughs> All those in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed. Motion carries. <clears throat> Thank you, Ms. Kidd. <clears throat> Thank you. Okay. Now under miscellaneous, miscellaneous. <laughs> discuss and take appropriate action on fire marshal's request for an additional $12,915.07 to pay PO 23521 refurbish of engine number six. Invoice was originally $298,239. Okay, Mike. You have a hard sale here today, but we're ready to listen. Thank you, Judge. Commissioners. Uh, Jeff couldn't be here today, so I'm Mike Stafford, Deputy Fire Marshal. Uh, originally, this, like I said, the bill was for uh, the 298000 but it's come in at 311 The discussion was done back on uh, March 26th. I believe Casey Weaver was here presenting it. Uh, it was approved at that time. The only thing that was not approved or needed further discussion was the difference in painted wheels and chrome wheels. Uh, the difference in that was $500, roughly $500. Okay. Well, come in. Just, wheels? No, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all remember that discussion? No. <laughs> like I said, if you can convince Ke Commissioner Bruce White of this, I'll go along with anything that he'll go along with, okay? Is that your feeling, Commissioner Eagle? Yes, sir. Okay. So it's, your, it's in your bailiwick, Commissioner White. Yeah. Uh, Jeff looked, it did look up the minutes, and uh, there, I did make a motion to approve the minute quote and repairs and uh, tabled the cost of wheels until we could meet with Ray Wilson. It was seconded. Uh, I don't know who seconded it, but I know I made I made the motion and it was a, it was approved. Uh, I do know Casey came in and uh, presented it, and uh, I'll make a motion to pay uh, PO, uh, PO 23521 for a total of 
I second that just with the caveat that this is this is not new money except the little bit of difference of 12 uh, 11 12,000 that we didn't know until they got in there and fixed it right yes sir, yes, sir. yeah I second that okay motion been made by Commissioner White <clears throat> Money and second by Commissioner Eagle. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries 3 0. Thank you. Thank you. What else do you have? Uh, we have some items. Uh, our vehicle maintenance has uh, increased. We are requesting $300 be moved from. Uh, Supplies, emergency management to the vehicle maintenance. You want me to talk about that? Page one of four in the bottom. Is what I have on the agenda, or is it it's under the auditor? Oh yeah, on page one. D, so that's already been done. What are we doing? Oh, no. Okay. Me. Okay. I just want to make sure. Yeah. Right. Oh, that's been done. Okay. Okay. Quit while you're ahead. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. You got your item approved there. You better take a seat. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Mike. Okay. Item number two, consider and take appropriate action regarding the purchase of four more phones with phone cases for the Sheriff's Department. Good morning, Sheriff Deeds, and good morning, Mr. Drew Whitaker from the <coughs> ID Department. What do we got here? Morning, Judge and Commissioners. Um, I've got a full staff in um, with my deputies, and so we came up. We've been trying to hire some people in patrol for a long time. We finally got full staff. They, they're actually working right now. Um, so I need four more phones to cover those patrol guys, so. Okay. Four phones are 2200 a year? Yes. Yes. Um, there will be a one-time fee of $133 for phone cases, and then, of course, the four phones for a year will be a little over $2,200 a year. No, I do not. You have the money? Do what? All these phones are paid out of Drew's budget for telecommunications online. That's where they're paid for. That's where all telecommunications are paid for. That's one of the reasons I did not want him to give more money than he did, because I anticipated this might come up, and we'll get a budget amendment in the next court to correct this. But does he have money in his budget? Well, they're not due quite yet, but we'll have it in there. I'll figure it out. We'll get it straight. So the two of you recommend we yes. got the money to go ahead and get these phones because we evidently and need the phones. For yes, sure. they have to have them. So what's the total amount on this? On so this? it'll be a one-time fee of 133 for the phone cases. Four phones? No, that is total for all four phones. For four like, phone cases, and look, then yeah, it looks like twenty three hundred sixty four dollars and seventy three cents. Yes, the twenty three sixty four seventy three. That is for the yearly cost of the cell service. So we only have to pay a few months before we pay this again. Correct. So we'll find it. So the total amount of those two numbers added, not per phone. I was going to say, so yes, that is the total. That is correct. Twenty-three sixty-four seventy-three is the total. For all four. For all four. Yes. Okay. We only have to pay a couple of months of this year's budget and start over October first, correct? 
or no. what does that contract start? I was going to say, this. if this gets approved, this will be a new contract for these four phones only for a year. Okay. Mm -hmm. So this would be away from the original, what, 70 phones we purchased originally? Would they prorate so we could be on the same contract? I can ask, I can ask the prorate, let's, yes. Let's try to do that okay. because that will keep us... Yep. Everything Absolutely. Together. It'll be a little bit more, but we can we can make it happen. Absolutely. Not only can we not hear you, now with the new mask, we can't totally hear you. It's just a big mumble, but okay. I'm assuming your eyes are smiling, so we got the money <laughs> yes. and it's going to be taken care of. Yes, sir. And we do need it. Yes. Okay. Any further discussion? <clears throat> okay. Do I hear an appropriate motion? Yeah, Judge, I'll, I'll make that motion to purchase four more phones with phone cases for the Sheriff's Department in the total amount of $2,364.73. Second. Out of Drew's Maybe. pocket. All right, motion's yeah. been made by Commissioner Eagle regarding the four phones and second by Commissioner White. All those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say nay. Motion carries 3-0. Thank you. All right, good, Sheriff. Does this, some of these deputies move down here from Milwaukee? Is that why you got a full staff finally? No, we haven't got any of those yet. Okay, good. All right. Item number three, consider and take appropriate action authorizing the county judge to sign a contract with Charter Spectrum in regards to adding a new phone line and JP4, good morning, Judge Tuggle. Good morning, gentlemen. Appreciate y'all listening to this this morning. We're having issues in our office. Every time our fax machine goes off, it shuts off our payment machine. And so I think it's critical that we bring in as much money as we can in the county. When I, the increase uh, that we're seeing in the use of the fax now because of the COVID situation, it goes off a whole lot more, so it's turning into a critical situation in our office of stopping payments because people can't pay if we can't utilize our online payment system. And so that's why we're asking for a, a separate phone line for that system so it stands alone. Because I want to try to generate what we can for the county. You always generate a lot of money for the county, Judge Tuggle. And I sure want to see that stream of income continue. And, uh, I think maybe, Jay, if you hear, wouldn't that be covered under some future CARES money that we can get to even pay for this line? It's because of the increase in COVID. What? Try to see, try to put your magic pencil to it. I mean, we're having <laughs> to get a new line because of all the COVID, everybody's doing transaction by paying online here. Uh, to me. I'll sit down with Becky and we'll have to do some research on that to see. Okay, well. That means no. Yeah. <laughs> that means he's going to try real hard, though, aren't you, Jay? Okay, so I'll make the motion here that Money. we're authorized. Huh? Do sure, you know, you know what this will cost? <laughs> so it'll be a one-time fee of $100, and then it will be $15 a month for oh. three years. Well, that's kind of cheap enough. That line would probably pay for itself in 10 minutes then, wouldn't it? It can pretty quickly, yes, sir. Okay. Okay. Now, any further discussion? Well, I, I guess somebody else needs to make the motion because I need can't make a motion that I authorize myself. <laughs> yeah, I'll make, I'll make the motion. You sign that, uh, you, that you sign the contract with Charter Spectrum <laughs> in regards to adding a new phone. Uh, for JP number four in the amount of $280 for this year, for the, for 12 months, yes, sir. right? That's correct. Second. 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 Okay. Motion made. I'll sit though. Mm -hmm. uh, right. Appreciate that. Mm -hmm. To put Thank in you. a new phone line in JP four, second by Commissioner White. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries 3-0. Thank, you. Thank you very much, Appreciate help. Judge Tuggle. Okay, this is another highlight for me today. Number four, consider and take appropriate action to approve the Hood County Library's 2020 
2025 long range plan. <laughs> Our county librarian here. Hello. Welcome, Jennifer. Welcome. Good morning. Good, Good morning. Good morning. Um, in order for us to keep our accreditation through the state, we have to have a, a long-range plan approved by our governing body to keep that, and there hasn't really been one in place since, 20, since 2000 to 2015, so for five years there really hasn't been one in place. So um, I have written one with the help of some library advisory board members and some community members, and I got input from some different groups, which was hard to do in COVID, <laughs> but I did some surveys and some contacting some different people and uh, was able to put something together. So um, with, with that, we've revised our mission statement and our vision. We didn't have a vision, which a vision is a broader statement than a mission statement. Um, and then our collection development mission, uh, we became a little more specific and then um, we set up four goals for the library to try to uh, meet over the next five years. Do you want me to read those goals? Or are we good? I hear about the library that you're doing a great job that <laughs> all the employees down there it's a good morale and all of y'all are working together and the library is very functioning very very well and that you're doing a great job. Thank, so, thank you. Uh, yes, we are. This we is really wonderful. Is everybody in agreement of the, with this uh, plan that you all have developed? Um, I, t I went over it with all of the library advisory board before I brought it here, and um, everybody seemed seemed good with it. So I haven't had any kickback thank from you. anybody. Yeah, I'll make that motion to approve the uh, librarians, library directors, Hood County Libraries 2020 to 2025 long range plan. I second that motion. <laughs> okay. All those in favor, say aye. Aye. All opposed, motion carries 0-0. Thank you very much, Ms. Thank Long. you. Thank you. Item number five, discuss and take appropriate action on request to hire an emergency planner. Okay. Morning, Judge. Morning, Commissioners. Good morning, Mr. West. So in the October 1 budget, I had put this position in there, uh, which I'll have approved to hire starting October 1st. What I'm requesting to do is to hire the position earlier. Several reasons is we are starting to get way behind on some mandates that the state of Texas is now starting to do with all of their planning changes and planning requirements. We've got FEMA that is now requiring a bunch of changes to the nuclear power plant and how our planning is done there. Uh, me and the sheriff spent three hours on a phone call with them the other day that, of our life that is now missing uh, to discover that we're already way behind on some planning that they're requiring. Um, so with everything going on that's COVID related, trying to help the county, the school, the hospitals and everything that I'm doing, it's making it very difficult to try to stay on top and keep up with a lot of this new stuff that's being mandated. So what I'd like to do is hire the planner earlier, get them trained up so that we can meet some of those deadlines before December versus hiring them in October, then we're going to be really scraping really quickly to try to meet some of the mandates in December. Also, if we hire the person during this time of an emergency, which we've talked to the county attorney, which we can, since this position wasn't budgeted for right now in this budget, the CARES Act money can reimburse us and pay for this position through December. If we wait till it's budgeted for, then it's gonna make it more difficult for me to try to work with Becky and the HR to try to recoup that salary from now until December. <coughs> And so I'm trying to kind of take advantage of what we would call a, in y'all's world a loophole and try to let the CARES Act money help us pay for it now, get us going on some serious planning and stuff that we need to get going and before it costs us, before it causes other ripple effects because if we get too far behind on the planning and we don't get those things turned in on time, it could start having a ripple effect of causing us to lose out on money or get in trouble with the state or FEMA or the power plant. So I'm needing some help to get get this going. How much is this position going to pay? Becky and uh, me budgeted for $52,000 starting October 1. 
um, minimum. Actually, I have over 55,000 budgeted for this position. In our discussion with her, there, we budgeted it at 55. There is one person that has shown some interest that has a radiological background in planning. And as I had the discussion with her, if somebody with those kind of credentials applies and that's who we end up picking, we needed to pay a little bit more versus the, the one that didn't have that experience uh, to do that. And what was the reasoning for not wanting to wait until October 1st? So the state of Texas recently has shut down their planning system that we were operating under, which basically allowed us to do everything in a Word document, keep it in a notebook, and turn those Word documents in by email. Uh, they went to a system that I had to sit in on a class on, on Zoom the other day for about an hour. Within five days, I had to register to get us into that system. And in between now and December, we have to start taking all of our plans. So the basic plans and then Annex A through Z has to be uploaded into that system. And then there's, it's, it's kind of like an application, plus all those attachments has to be done and put into that system by December because that's the way the state's going to start doing business. Supposedly, the system's going to take and convert our plans into their new conversion of how they want them written. If it doesn't, then we've got to start going in there and cleaning that up and converting within that. And that's just on our state planning side uh, for operating under all of our emergencies that we do. Uh, the second thing is Comanche Power, well, it's not Rick Comanche, FEMA has requiring all of the nuclear power plants to redo all of their plans. Ours was due in, the, in 2019 because of COVID, everything kind of got delayed. We have a TBA. Sometime this year, our plans and our crosswalks and all that are due. We just don't know when yet. So that means everything is getting turned upside down on the Comanche power plant and the plans that go with that because of what FEMA's decided to do. So that's affecting us there as well. And so it's trying to get some, somebody on board to help me get on top of that before we continue to fur, fall further and further behind on our planning piece with our overall plans for both. And also the other thing is FEMA has added a mandate of a pandemic requirement to be added to your health annex. And so I've got somebody who out, who's volunteered to help me do that outside of our world that works in the medical field that's helping me work on Annex H, which is our health plan, uh, to start getting that pandemic added into our health response. So did you tell me yesterday that you're, right now you're spending about 90% of your time dealing with COVID? Yes, sir. That is so what is, what's gonna happen when that, when, let's just say tomorrow, the governor says, I'm gonna rescind my order, I'm opening th things back up, and COVID's not the issue that it is today, or maybe that happens next week, or maybe that happens next month, then what do you do? What are you gonna do then? Well, we still have a lot going on that I take care of on a daily basis, but somebody needs to be focusing on the plans full time. Those so, plans have to be stayed up on top of because they continually change and continually need to be updated. So with all, the, with all this uh, uh, disruption in, in all of our business, uh, government business, et cetera, uh, you're saying that the state is still going to require that we stay on top of these, uh, on, on top of these deadlines. That is correct. The emails have started coming out. This basically have said, I understand that everybody has been dealing with COVID, but it's time that we also start focusing back on other things that need to be uh, gotten back on top of, which is our planning and going to these new systems and everything else. That they're no longer delaying uh, us doing those things. So are you, uh, are, you getting, are you not getting any type of help or guidance from Dr. Massey with, D, with DISHES, DSHS? As far as what, sir? Uh, any, any of this, any, any, any money? No. Nope. Nope. Now, and I want to point out that when you, when you talk about the budget, this is a proposed budget on October 1st. This is not the budget yet. We don't, you know, I've got, here's the problem I've got right now, trying to make a, any kind of decision today is we don't have the appraisal district's numbers back. We don't know what we're working with yet. And we've already told, we've already made it clear out here with the county that we're not hiring any more people and we're not giving any, we can't give raises right now. And so I, I, I'm having trouble with this today. And we, plus we've got two members missing. I just, 
I'm just starting to get my hands around this right now, and uh, to me, there's too many unknowns to make a decision until we understand what we're working with financially. We may not have the money to hire somebody else. Well, I can tell you our plans have not been updated since 2015. Uh, so we're already coming up on six years behind, which is going to put us in a serious bind if we get audited at the first of the year when I start turning these plans into the system. Well, Jay, uh, is there a problem waiting until we hear from the uh, with from the appraisal district? You know, because they're going to tell us something in a couple of weeks. The only, re like I said, the only reason I'm asking for it to be done earlier is so that I can get them trained and then get them going. Uh, right now we have what, if we started October, August 1, we'd have August 1 to December versus if I start October, by the time I get them up and running, you, we're going to have about 60 days to get on top of all of this stuff if I can't get to it before then. And ha have you allocated, you told me yesterday about spending time for school, spending time for hospital. Have you allocated, do you have a good number idea in your mind how much you're spending dealing with those entities? Yeah, I document my day every day. I started doing that from March 3rd to turn in as part of documentation that's going to end up being turned into TDM. Um, last month I worked 240 hours uh, dealing with everything that's pretty much trying to keep this county up and running. I spent three hours on my Saturday dealing with the hospital, helping the judge, helping the two commissioners. Um, but so, dealing with the school and dealing with the dealing with the hospital with this issue with COVID is just for that. I mean, when that's when COVID. Well, I'm going to be real optimistic here. When COVID insanity goes away sooner than would be better for me than later. Some of those issues are going to take care. They're going to be gone. We hope and so. so. Yes, sir. And so I'm having. You know, once we hire somebody, once we got another position going and we create another position and set aside the money for it, it's there. And I'm just, I, need, I for me, I just need to do some more, I need more study on this to even think about putting a job, you know, we have to put set it out for a job opening. We got to put it out there and advertise it properly. We're missing two commissioners and I'm, I just, you know, I'm still having trouble uh, being able to go, go along with that today. And I understand your predicament, but we haven't, we haven't got, we don't know what our budget's going to be yet. So we've got a lot of unknowns that we're, that's, you know, that's one of the problems I've had with this whole COVID and the, the whole COVID deal is we're up here trying to make decisions and we're only getting bits and pieces of information to make them on. And I understand that early on, but we've been in this now for four and a half months and, you know, it seems like the longer, you know, it just doesn't, I don't see an end to it. I'm trying to, and I'm, I'm not, don't take this wrong, I'm not getting on to you about it. I'm just kind of venting a little bit, I guess, but as I told you yesterday, rhetorically, you know. As I told you yesterday, we're going to have to learn to work within this. It's just going to be just <clears> like the flu. It's going to be here. It's just when we add the flu there's, on top of this, I think the things are going to be a little worse. When the school starts, they're going to need a little bit more help than they're getting now based on the lack of funding that they got. I've been sharing that with, I shared that with you and the judge yesterday of uh, things that I'm going to have to probably help them do, just like the hospital, if we continue on the rate that we're doing. Um, so, but just as a reminder, I understand and hear you on the money, that my salary up until October and everything that's been spent on me is reimbursed. If we hire the person now, then the cost of that person gets covered until the end of, end of December. But once, if you approve it October 1, it's now budgeted for, we can't reimburse that position because it wasn't done outside of a non-budgeted thing per the CARES Act rules. And so I'm kind of playing their game. They said that I could get the help and they, could, they would pay for it. I understand what your concern is going to be come January 1. Do we have the money to continue to cover it? So I'm kind of trying to play that game as they gave me a loophole to figure out a way to pay for it now and get it on there and get it covered till the first of the year. And so that's kind of some of those. Is the, is the CARES Act going to play, pay for the whole uh, salary? Yes, sir. Because, I mean, if you have $55,000 salary, it's really going to be closer Correct. to 75 days to 80. Don't look at me. <laughs> <laughs> 
Um, Leanne, based on what y'all have read. Well, here's what I'm worried about is losing out on any more money. We got $500,000, right? We, after we cut these checks that are sitting over here with everybody, we'll have about 155000 still left uh, that we have not spent. Uh, what I am doing right now is working on trying to make sure we have enough supplies going forward that if anybody calls needing something from a department that we have those supplies uh, to give them. Um, as we're already starting to see, uh, supplies are starting to get short again because hospitals are starting to, here we go, buy them again. Uh, we're also hearing through the grapevines that certain manufacturers and certain companies are going to start making stuff. So until the price goes up, they'll start making it again. And so I'm trying to get ahead of those games so we don't end up in the position we ended up back in March where we had nothing. We had to depend on a community to give us about $10,000 worth of stuff and 2,500 masks that were handmade out of a garage. Uh, I'm just trying to avoid those situations and get us ahead. And so that's what I've been spending the money on other than the economic relief fund uh, that we've done for the community. Well, so while the 505 that we've received, how much did we have left? About 150, 55. Okay, and uh, you got 155. So out of, that, out of this 505, is, it, is uh, your salary and this person's salary already been deducted or do we have to take it out of the 155? So we still have $2.5 million that's sitting over here not with Becky, it's just sitting over here. So we got a total of three million dollars. So five yeah, twenty percent they gave us up front. What we'll end up doing towards the end of the year is all the prisoners that the sheriff has sitting over there that the state has not taken. He is keeping me a daily total of that running because it come December we'll turn all of those expenditures he's had for all of those state prisoners, we'll turn that into the state to get all that money reimbursed. Come September 30th, 30th, we'll turn in my salary and all my expenditures to get reimbursed for my salary. Any expenditures that we have between now and December, once we run out of the 155, we turn into the state through the system that I've got us up and running on and all of our documentation is up. That's what I've been focusing on, is keeping our CARES Act documentation up to speed and it's all into the system now. They've got every dime we've spent with every justification up to this point and so that's what we're doing and I have to sit down with Becky as we go forward and say all right here's this documentation this is what we're going to need to spend and so that's some of that conversations where we ended up making sure that we had the money to spend going forward knowing that we were going to get reimbursed on the back end. So you're saying we're going to get another two and a half million? Well if I spent that much yes sir we would but I, I, I can't see us spending two and a half million dollars. I, I can't think of a lot of things I, unless y'all just want me to throw out a million dollar bus or something. I mean. Well, one thing for sure, if you don't spend it, you're not going to get reimbursed for it. And, and that's got it correct. For us. I agree with Commissioner Eagle about this thing. I'm sick about this COVID stuff. I wish that we could get back to normal, but I don't see it happening just anytime soon. It's just not going to happen. I wish it would. That'd be the best Christmas present in the world if it'd be over with by December, but it's just not going to be over with by December. And getting our paperwork on stuff, getting your salary and all your overtime and all your expenses totally reimbursed to us. And like you said, we're not going to get an emergency planner if we wait and put it in the budget type hearings where we have a good shot about hiring an emergency planner now, which we need to get brought up. I don't want to be losing any of this CARES money. This money that we've got that we've helped out the community already has been a big help to the community. And we still got it waiting in the wings two and a half million if we justify it. I mean, this is something that we really have to have. I don't like doing it either. But I know what you do all the time and you've got to have some help. That's the flip side of this. We just can't keep asking you to work every Saturday and Sunday and every time else up here, and you work long hours too. What we have to have is somebody to have you to help you here. Um, 
I, I, I go along with uh, Commissioner Eagle too. I wish that Commissioner Deaver and Commissioner Cotton were here, but have you spoken to Commissioner Deaver and Commissioner Cotton like you've spoken to, well, I know you've spoken to me about it and you've spoken to Commissioner Eagle about it. Have you spoken to Commissioner White about it? Yes, sir, I've visited with each commissioner. Um, talking to Commissioner Deaver and Commissioner Cotton, they were both for it. That's why you see Commissioner uh, Deaver sponsored it. They were, both of them were willing to sponsor it. They were both in agreement based on coming through the office and seeing a lot of the stuff that I've been doing, uh, getting me the help. Um, I mean, I, I literally have four phones that I answer every day. When I get done with here, I'll have at least 30 to 35 calls to return back to the community. So when I'm returning those calls and my computer's building up and I turn and focus on the computer, I've been spending a lot of time helping Melissa and HR with stuff uh, going on that's throughout the community or throughout our county with employees. I've been working with Becky, been working with Leanne and, and trying to keep all the, it's unfortunate, yes, e Commissioner Eagle's correct. There's a lot of this that has to do with COVID. And I wish I had a magic ball some days to make it go away where it was just a normal day. But I can assure all of y'all that with this extra position, it doesn't mean that I'm gonna be sit back kicked in my chair there is lots of work to be done. There, there's more work than I could sit here and, and describe to you, not only the planning piece, because if we have to completely rewrite every plan, that's your basic plan plus Annex A through Z. And the sheriff can attest from his years of experience what that's gonna entail. That is outside the realm of what the Comanche Peak Power Plant and FEMA is requiring us to do on the nuclear regulation side, which is, way more in depth than what we have to do on this side. And they're both in the middle of switching to new systems. Um, so it's a planner's job is going to be sitting there writing and making sure that if any of y'all ever call, our plan is up to date as to what we're supposed to do when we respond to whatever that incident is. My job too is to do that part too, but as well, make sure that we're in tune with what the community needs, each city needs, what whatever it is we need to be buying or doing to take care of the community and taking care of you guys that's so it's i got two jobs to do and so as you can tell the, the other with the with the with one person having all the duties that's why our plans aren't up to date now they're still behind from 2015. One plan got updated in 2019, and that's because three people sat down to get it done because it was mandated to get done. Everything else has just been floating in the wind. And so if, if we get audited going forward, it could jeopardize funding going forward. So why can't we, I'm sorry, go ahead. So why can't we outsource? If you're just talking about putting together plans and, and transcribing them from one program to another, a software program like from I don't know word to something else that they've changed to why can't we outsource that it's not you have to write your own plans for your own county so these but, these plans why can't we outsource that who we're going to outsource it to that knows our county that understands what we have to do within our our county and take it to the format there's a specific format that falls within the emergency management world that you have to follow and if you want to pay that kind of money it's gonna cost you about a million and a half dollars to get somebody to outsource it to do, come in here and do all your plans. I can assure you that. It's gonna be way so more expensive to hire somebody to come in as a consultant to do that than it would be to hire a planner full time. And you got numbers you can show me to prove that. That's just what I know from working at the state and knowing what they've charged the state to come in and do those things. You know, Jay, I know you do, you, you mean, you've worked your tail end off during this, <clears throat> I, I, you know, I've seen you, you're, you know, everywhere, you're, you're answering calls, you know, you're correct at, uh, you know, and I'm not saying you don't need help. I mean, uh, I know that, that uh, we've been fortunate to have you during this uh, time because nobody up here, uh, I don't know if we, if we'd have been able to work through this, we probably could have, but it would have been a mess. And it's hard, and, you know, and I appreciate the hard work you've done so far. Thank you, sir. Well, let me say this. All the hard work that you've done would have been all the hard work that would have been expected of me 
because the emergency manager coordinator was one of my duties in addition to me being the judge and on the hospital district board and all the other duties that I've did, there'd been no way that I could have done all of this. And uh, I don't like spending money, but I think that knowing that we got two and a half million dollars in reserves that we can tap into, and I think that what you've got to do and what we've got to do to get up to date, and when I found out, first of all, that all the planning was not up to date, when I took over, it became county judge on January the 1st of 2019, that there was five, well, five years at that time, or four years at that time, that we were behind in all the planning deals that was left up to me to do it. I don't know when I would have had time to do it. I mean, I just think that we need this, folks. I mean, we're going to be able to get the money back if we do it now, and we need to get started now. Because if you wait until October to do this, you always have Thanksgiving and Christmas in here, and those are the two months of which you don't get any work done. I've, that's just been my deal. It just tends to be you just don't work as hard during the holidays that we celebrate Thanksgiving and Christmas. And frankly, that's just it. People are taking off. They're, you know, the way the days fall, you're not really getting two months' worth of work either. And i tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to go out on a limb, and I, I'm just going to go ahead. I know you need it because I see you, and I talk to you every day. Every day I talk. My first call in the morning is to talk to Jay Webster to try to find out about this. And I know what he's done, and he's always available on Sunday evenings too. We've got to have a planner. He's got to have some help. And uh, I'm just I'm going to go ahead and make the motion that we hire an emergency planner as soon as we can do to, to work with uh, Melissa Welburn that we get the requirements going out of what we have to do to hire an emergency planner and try to do that right now. Today is what, July the, what, 14th, 15th, what is today, 14th? It's already half of July is already gone, so it's going to, by the time we get somebody hired and get somebody in the position, I mean, you're going to be, what, in August already. And then for them to get up to date and start really working, I mean, even if we do it now, it's going to be tight to get them up to date and to finish everything that we need to do. So I move that we um, hire an emergency planner and that you work with Melissa Welburn about doing all the appropriate steps of getting the requirements done to hire an emergency planner and then to do everything possible to get that salary reimbursed and you're going to get your whole salary reimbursed I would think. That's all you've worked on it since you've been hired except for the first two weeks, right? Yes, sir. So. All of your money will be reimbursed? Yes, sir. All of his money, all of his salary from, when was it, February? When March, you, March 3rd. March 3rd? So all of about 10 days has all been on COVID, hadn't it? Yes, sir. So getting your salary back, I, I think that the county would have enough money, even if we didn't, but I think that we have a better chance of getting the emergency planner done through December, and if you could show the amount of work that would be accomplished, I think we have a good shot at getting the salary also paid out of the other two and a half million dollars that's caught a bit, been earmarked for Hood <laughs> County, correct? Yes, sir. So that's my motion. In other words, my motion is that we allow Jay Webster and Melissa Welburn to take the appropriate steps to hire an emergency planner for hopefully around fifty-two to fifty-five thousand dollars depending upon credentials. We're not gonna go above fifty to five, right? Yeah, not above fifty-five thousand. So that's like fifty-six because there's an actual dollar amount with the step. I don't remember it exactly, but it's fifty-five plus. I'm okay. Fifty-six thousand. Okay, well I mean, well the I next don't remember the step and the dollar amount. Okay. Sorry. All right. Well that a, a
approximately the fifty-five to fifty-six thousand yes. dollars in accordance with our step plan. Okay. All right. That's my motion. Your Honor, could you restate the motion? Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Dean. I'm going to get you back one of these days. I move that we hire an emergency planner to assist with all the um, applications and plans that need to be updated at, that are required by FEMA regarding the nuclear plan and all the planning that is required by the uh, delinquent uh, plans that this county needs to be brought current and to deal with all of the COVID requirements that are presently in effect and that may come into effect to assist Jay Webster in doing the uh, best to get the CARES Act to pay for all of the salaries for the emergency planner. Do I hear a second? Second. Made by County Judge Massin guilt to hire an emergency planner with the detail I just stated, second by Commissioner Eagle. Any further discussion? I'm White. Commissioner White, I'm sorry. Well, <clears throat> one last thing before we put this for a vote. And I, this is no, um, Judge and I are great friends and I just want to point out a counterpoint on this. And this is a, this is very, dis for me, it's very um, concerning because here's here's what really bothers me, and I know where this is headed. So I'm just, but I wanted to get this on the record. Uh, there's no such thing as free money. It doesn't exist. And what we're talking about is we've got a bucket here that for federal taxes. And we've got a bucket here that's got property taxes in it that goes. And we got a bucket here for sales tax and a bucket here for permit tax, stuff like that. And every one of these buckets, it comes out of our pocket to put in money in them, every one of them. So it is an illusion to, for this federal bucket that we put money in, that they steal from us, in my opinion, mostly. It's an illusion to say that we're going to get this money free because it's not. Now, I see where, you know, like I said, I'm just saying that because I don't buy into the idea of going and, and dancing to the federal government's tune to get money from them on everything. Some things I can go along with. This is one that's really giving me cause for heartburn, this whole thing. They've got us dancing to their little tune and we've got to, we have an incentive to keep this going from now on, as long as we keep getting money. So they got my money over here that they're giving, they're, you know, they're giving us a little bit of it back. And then they're, they're giving us mandates. You just told us we got mandates from the state and mandates from the government. Every penny we get back from the government has a string attached to it. It's just like with your kids, you give them the credit card or they want to come. They don't, I, I didn't want to go try to borrow money from my parents when I was young because there was lots of strings attached to it. And they got all involved in my life. And all, they wanted to know, you know, they, they wanted to run things. This is no different. So I'm, all I'm saying is that I want to, you to understand that there's a price that we're going to pay. And, and I understand on this COVID thing, it's, it's created a lot of tension between a lot of people that normally wouldn't have tension between them. But I'm, I'm, I just don't feel like we're ready to make this decision today, but the motion's been made and it's been seconded. So that's, I'm just saying that there's, there's no such thing as free money. It doesn't exist. You know, Dave, I mean, I, I agree with what some of you are saying, uh, but you know, Jay, I mean, right now needs some help. I mean. We're caught in the middle of something, and you know, uh, it's just, you know, he's one man trying to do multiple jobs. I mean, uh, I know I, I agree with your concerns on a lot of it, but uh, I also know that he needs some help. Any 
further discussion? Okay, the motion's been made by County Judge Massengill that we hire an emergency planner along the terms as have outlined, and second by Commissioner White. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed, nay. Nay. Motion carries two to one. Thank you very much. Thanks, Gus. Okay, the next item is consider and take appropriate action regarding the acquisition of radios for all county law enforcement and Hood County Volunteer Fire Departments. Sheriff Deeds. Judge, commissioners kind of segueing off of the last item. Hood County's in a unique position that we've been forced into that um, it, we really don't have a choice. Hood County, Somerville County, and Matagorda County are all stuck with the nuclear power plant. So we're all held to a higher standard. We got to do a few steps higher and, and a whole bunch more than a lot of other state or other counties in the state. So you know, there's a lot of work that has to be done. It's there's a lot of work that I did in back in the in before I became sheriff. So it's all just snowballing. We Jay and I were in that meeting the other day on three hours of our life. We'll never get back, but um, <laughs> it, it's all part of the future and all part of keeping everybody safe and working with FEMA and working with the state and working with the power plant and the main thing is keeping Hood County citizens safe. So, um, and what we're discussing now, the acquisition uh, of radios. So we've had, we talked about this a few different times. Um, Motorola came in and we've had a, they're in here, here today if you, they want, if you want them to answer any questions. Over the years, I've been using, um, self radio for uh, radio work and radio equipment. They provided me with information, quotes on uh, HGAC contracts, uh, state contracts. Uh, Motorola is on the state DIR contract, so we don't have to go out for any, uh, can't even think of the name. We can work off the state contracts. You don't have to go out for any special, what's Formal competitive bidding. There you go. So uh, there's a lot of good equipment out there. We've already, through Hood County, through the sheriff's office, we've already started to replace a lot of that equipment. We're moved and we're up and running with our 700 band radios um, for quite a while now. We're just trying to get everybody else up to speed to those radios for better communication. Um, I've sent the court, all the court members, the information that we've got from Motorola, from uh, self radio, um, and financing information too. So, where should I start? What questions do you have? Okay. Uh, I see back there we have Constable um, Chad Jordan here. Have y'all talked about? the proposal as well? Yeah, after I talked to Commissioner Eagle the other day, I, I went down and talked to uh, Constable Jordan about it, um, gave him the information, uh, sent him the Motorola information, so we've talked about it. It's, it, it's up to you guys as far as the, the how much we got to spend. I, I can't look you guys in the eye and say I want the, the moon. I understand where times are tough and all that, so we just need to get the equipment we need to get by and get everybody to a better level, a safer level to be able to uh, keep the first responders safe, which in turn keeps the citizens safe. Um, for the future, yeah, I'd love to be on the Fort Worth system and have a, uh, a year ago I brought to you, that brought to the court the information about a, a simulcast system to try to enhance the system we have. Um, and I'd love to move forward with that uh, everybody around us with Parker County, Johnson County, and the Metroplex are at a trunking system. Um, so we've heard information about that. Uh, I'd love to be there in the future, but right now it's a matter of just getting radios and, and moving forward so we can all communicate. But you can add the trunking system. I know that was kind of the difference I thought when I've heard this before in the workshop that we had is that uh, Councilman Jordan was kind of in favor of the trunking system right now but you don't really need it right now or is, is that what I'm hearing from you but it can be added 
and you think it's going to be needed in the future? In the future, yes. Um, that's where everybody's going to. That's where the Metroplex is going to. Adjoining counties with Parker County, Johnson County, that's where they're at now. Um, right now, we don't use that. Um, I think it's very important to have encrypted radios for the law enforcement um, and just better communications overall for everybody to get them onto that 700 megahertz system that we have. Um, in the the other radios that we have utilized and have purchased in the last year, they in the trunking can be added to those like an option, just turn it on. Um, the quality of those radios that we have with the Harris radios, it's there. So it's just a matter of when you want to pay to turn it on. Right now they've got some deals going. The, the list cost for Harris radios is $1,500 for trunking. Uh, the, the HGAC price is $1,100. Um, and they've got some specials with trade-ins for down to 400 and I believe it was $410 for the added option of the trunking. Um, and then it's um, on the price quotes that we have, I think it was for uh, just under $600 for that extra option. But it can be turned on at a later date. The radios are more like computers anymore. Uh, it's just a matter of turning it on. Okay. Do you agree with that, Constable Jordan, about the trunk and being able to turn on? So right now, I, I do agree with Commissioner Eagle about you don't know where taxing money yet. We're trying to get out of here. Really, we want the best bang for the buck. That's what we're trying to do. And if we can get the radios and the system that can be added on later when it looks, sounds like, trunking is indeed coming down the line maybe in another year or so, but hopefully we will be in better shape financially to take care of that. So with the proposal that Roger has for you, that he's given you, dealing with uh, the trunking and showing everything, the cost that's been reduced in this proposal on adding trunking now is going to save you 50% of the trunking cost. If we wait and add it later, it's going to cost us $1,100 a radio. And if you look at the minimal cost out of the $600,000, and it's less than $40,000 to uh, incorporate the trunking, to put us, the entire county, to put the radios at the level we need to be, that the city was even talking about that once we get to that trunking level that we've been trying to get to for, for 13, 15 years, this puts us where communications needs to be. Instead of three radio systems in the county, when it comes time for upgrade of repeaters, because every repeater we have is outdated, unsupported, there's going to, that, it's coming when Roger's going to need those things for communications within the county. And, and, and to help to do that, by being on truck and bringing those things up, we can take it and helps him bring that up to where 700 megahertz to have everybody in the entire county on 700 megahertz on one radio system when that time comes. So to save that money now on adding the, the trunking gives us the interoperability, puts us in compliance with the state interoperability plan, and it you know helps us to, to have communications with those around us, but it helps bring Roger to that next level to when it comes time to upgrade those repeaters, we can get the ones needed to have one radio system in the entire county. What is the additional cost of adding trunking to all the radios right now that uh, I didn't I don't have that sheet you've got that Is one it, sheet in that the deal showing. I had mine I was studying I it's, left it's it at 38,000 38,000 $38, and it would be more than double that if we add it later because now they're giving us that reduced price for adding trunking Chad, do you have a total cost to buy these with the trunking for everything we need that's what he's got right there he's already given all that yes <laughs> well, that's option B, correct? Option? Yes. And then, and then we've got the uh, we've got this revised number uh, from Motorola, and they've got a lease purchase option five, seven, and ten year uh, proposal there as well. Absolutely. And we're looking at you know straight up money. We're looking at uh, a little less than two hundred thousand dollars difference. Would you uh, would you mind indulge us a little bit and explain what trunking trunking means? I'm going to have 
to defer that to the people that are no more than I do about trunking. There's trunking and there's encryption. In the state interoperability plan, everybody's moving and the state's moving towards in, uh, trunking uh, for interoperability purposes to where we're not patching and having so many issues. But I mean, I, I'm sure everybody in here knows what trunking is, but I don't. <laughs> Thank you, Commissioner. In brief, trunking is a means of spectrum use, of use of the radio frequencies that are out there, where everyone, every agency, whether it be police, fire, EMS, shares those same frequencies. In a, in a current system, um, the sheriff's office has their own channel, uh, the fire department has their own channel, PD has their own channel, um, whereas those channels may not be used to 100%. Whereas the sheriff's office may use his channel to 120%, he needs more capacity. <coughs> Whereas the fire department may, and these are hypothetical, I'm just making these numbers up, but they may only use their channel 50% of the time. Trunking allows those resources to be shared amongst everyone. And so without having to add additional physical frequencies, we can share that unused space, unused time, and amongst all the agencies at the same time. So, so the fire department, so to speak, can talk to the sheriff and, and see, I, this is just showing you my level or lack of level of knowledge. When I first I heard this not too long ago, I never dreamed that they weren't talking to each other. I mean, as a lay person, I just thought all you guys knew what each other was doing. And uh, so the trunking basically actually allows you all Fire, different agencies to connect. Is that is that fair? There is the, there is the means to be able to connect, and it is sharing those resources that are already out there amongst the entire group, so that we have more capacity and more ability to talk with the resources that we have. Um, think of it as telephone lines. Most of the time, like a building like this, there's a fixed number of telephone lines that come in here. But we've got 200 phones, but we may only have six phone lines that come into the building. Right. So when you pick up the phone and you dial an outside line you're actually grabbing one of those available f phone lines. Same thing happens with trunking. We may have 500, 600 radios out in the, in the field, but only four channels available. We share those available channels amongst each other. Whatever's available, the system designates those channels available and allows those agencies to talk. So the flip, and then if you'll help us with this one too then, so encryption, what, because I, I kind of heard two opposing things here. It's like we need trunking to be able to talk to each other but on the other hand, we need encryption to where we can't talk to each other. So, so give us, a, help, help me with that one. In a nutshell, encryption is a means of privacy. Um, so uh, encryption and trunking, two separate unrelated items. Um, so trunking can, or encryption can operate in a conventional system or it can operate in a trunking system. So uh, trunking is, tr or correction, uh, encryption is purely encoding information that allows or keeps other individuals, primarily individuals you don't want hearing your radio traffic, out of that ability, keeping them from being able to hear that. Same thing as encrypting an email. So when you send out an email across the internet, that gets encrypted so that hackers cannot actually you know, read your email. It's the same philosophy of encryption as keeping unwanted parties from being able to hear what you're doing. So is there, is, and help me with this, is how do you reconcile, I mean, I'm, I'm hearing like two different concepts, so. So, you know, my Casey Moore, sure. Motorola, um, Judge Commissioners, we have three, three issues that you're kind of facing. One is the spectrum, different bands, VHF, 700, UHF, that can operate in conventional or trunking. We have the amount of available frequencies that's either conventional or trunking, so trunking is more efficient. As you run out of spectrum, you want to move to trunking, and then we have encryption. They all play together. So right now you're in a conventional world with different bands and two different encryption algorithms. Um, you want to get to a common platform. You want to get to where you're on the most efficient system, the same band, and the same encryption algorithm. So that's kind of the steps, that's the evolution. So we know your end goal, is here, so we want to put radios in front of you that help you get there. Um, so encryption, you have one algorithm with a city, one algorithm with a county, they can't talk. You have UHF with a city, VHF 700 with a county, that, that's problematic. Um, your long-term goal is you want to add more capacity, you want to have the same band, you want to have the same encryption algorithm so that everybody can talk and be on the same plan. 
Um, that's what you've seen the Metroplex do, move into the common system. It's for those exact reasons. Thank you. May I ask the question? Do you have Take your mask off, Becky. Just hold it. Yes, ma'am. Do you have a true lease program? We have a municipal lease program with a, uh, with a non-appropriation clause. Um, yes, ma'am. Do we have that cost? Um, you Talk in your mic, would you? So, yeah, we do have Please. we have the, the rate information, we have the lease payments, but we do not have the actual formal lease document, but I can generate, I'm oh, sorry. Um, we, we have the rate information in there, we have the terms, um, it's a flat payment, it's in arrears. Um, there's a non-appropriation clause. It is designed specifically for municipalities um, to do a lease purchase, and we'd be glad to get you the actual lease information to, for your attorneys to review. Thank you. Chad, I want to ask some, how many times a year do y'all use trunking? I mean, we don't because we don't have it. I mean, but how, many, how, how, many, how many would you, would you? Uh, we're in Johnson County a lot. Uh, being in Crescent, we have uh, Parker County in there. We have Tarrant County uh, that we deal with when we're dealing with uh, work, trying to work warrants. Whenever we get caught up on some civil stuff, we're in Johnson and, and Tarrant County a lot because we have a lot of warrants out of those. Um, well, well, you, can I ask you this then? Can every, every agency in our county communicate with each other without a trunking system? Presently, no. Presently, no. You got to have three different radios from, to do that. The voice from above just answered I that. I can't talk to the city. I can't talk to the fire department. Half the time, I can't talk to the sheriff's department because we're all on different bands. I had an incident where I was a block away from an incident that needed assistance. I didn't know anything about it. I was halfway back to town before we realized what was going on. This officer safety. We can't communicate between agencies, EMS, fire or any law enforcement, as it stands right now. That, that, I think that's been the $64,000 question, Delton. <laughs> $40,000. And it puts you with that, with, with that trunked option added now. It helps whenever it comes time for, for the SO when they go to that next level. If we put everybody on a system and we look and mimic what other counties are doing, uh, even, even if we don't go on to the Fort Worth system, and Rogers stays a standalone system within Hood County that's trunked 700, we have the interoperability, we meet everybody in the entire Metroplex, which is great. Roger, in turn, well, like Johnson County, they charge for dispatch services is $22 a radio to other cities and municipalities. If you're not using dispatch services to be on the radio system is $19. When it comes time for him to upgrade the dispatch center and, and having to replace a console, having to replace uh, repeaters, comes out of that pool of money that the county is effectively managing. If you want to be part of that system, we have to take care of that system. And it helps him instead of him always coming in here saying, I need money. It helps to bring that uh, to the table to help with, with, with that. Johnson County on their system, 2,000 radios on five channels. We don't have 2,000 radios. You've got three channels, two? Two 700. Two 700 channels, and, and if we have everybody, the city, the PD, you know, the city, uh, you know, electrical, water, road, you know, everybody, road ops in the county, all on that system, then we're sharing resources with one radio system with two channels instead of three radio systems where nobody can communicate when we get to that next level when he has to start replacing equipment. So that's, that's my thoughts on trunking. As far as communication, uh, we can communicate, I believe it's channel seven on the Granbury radios, Granbury PD radios. So we use it during the protest. Um, so we do have communication between the sheriff's office and the and the police department. Uh, the other, the constables are on VHF. I'm trying to move people over onto the 700. So the radio plan that I put before you, that would uh, fix all that with those tri-band radios. So uh, and, um, amongst the documents that we've been provided between the, the, the option A and B from the, for the Harris, et cetera, and then what Motorola's provided us, we're looking at depending on the term, three, four, five year. Uh, actually, Motorola's got a five, seven, and 10 year proposal. Uh, we're really looking at na about 90,000 a year for 10 years Motorola, all the way up to a little over 200,000 a year. 
uh, for which, depending on which route we go, and st uh, anything, everything in between those two numbers. How does that reconcile with the budget right now, or how you know how does that fitting in with a proposed budget that we're not, you know, we we don't even know what we're working with yet, for sure. Commissioner Eagle, I have budgeted already that's in, in the proposed budget enough to cover buying these outright with trunking. That's, that's budgeted. My, I do have another question regarding this lease purchase option. Is this one where after three years they could get new radios? If it's not, then... Well, let them answer that. I don't have the... So it is true lease purchase. So you're, you're leasing the equipment and paying it off. And then once you've paid it, you own the equipment. If you want to do a trade-in at some point during that, we can definitely restructure and look at that, but it's not that's a... That's still, that'd be more money, though. It, it, okay. it would be then more money. It's, it's not a sign-up, and every three years we gotcha. give you a new radio. It's it's a true lease purchase, and we can do whatever terms. We can do one, two, three, four. <coughs> we have flexibility in that. But yes, ma'am. If you buy these outright with the trunking right now, as opposed to this lease option, you'd save $200,000? What number are you looking at? We've got several different. The one that Roger pointed out on the second page, the fourth, the third line down, grand total with all trunking included, 606-481-95. I'm hoping it's including constable. Roger, does this include the constables too? Okay. So the five year under option B with the trunking is it, it's a hundred and thirty one thousand five thirty one a year under the I don't, right? I don't want to finance yeah. this. We don't have to finance it. Right? The usual purchase. Yeah, that's all uh, <clears throat> it's and then on the back page, the Motorola is five years. It's uh, the lease payment is a uh, hundred seventy thousand four seven two a year. At the same time, is that apples to apples then? Not quite. That um, the Motorola cost has to have add the encryption, add the speaker mics, and add different options. So come up. So sure. what would the cost be then to get what we're looking at with the $38,000 in uh, trunking system that we wouldn't have to be, that we could all talk, or the county could talk? So I'm, I'm not, uh, just real, real quick, we, we did include remote speaker mic, spare battery, three-year warranty um, in, in the numbers that we provided. The, the amount for the 795, 147, that is trunking for the quantities that we were given. Um, we would have to add on the encryption. Um, it's 659 per radio, and I don't have that number readily available. Um, $659? To add in the encryption to each radio, yes, sir. So that What would, else would you have to add in? That would be it for what we've been asked to provide. Well, how many radios are we talking about? We can figure that. And I might have it here on another. Actually, I think I have it here in one moment. I don't have the lease information calculated. Well, how many radios is it, Sheriff? Well, if we go with the, the Motorola plan, then we need to change everything. That's 163 mobile radios and 196 handhelds. Um, so it's a lot of equipment, whereas I'm just trying to get us to that next level. I see. So the, the cost or the, the numbers are like for the handheld sheriff's office needs 16 more, 25 mobiles, fire marshal's office needs five hairs or five handhelds, two mobile radios, the fire departments, 88 mobile radios, 120 handheld radios, district attorney's office, constable's office, district and county bailiff, it's all included in that other cost. That's so Sheriff, is that how many original? radios is that? Is that roughly 200 and over 200 radios at $700, yeah, let's had. say? Speaker mics and all that. Okay. I didn't hear you, Judge. 
the total radios that we're talking about to add if we went the Motorola plan would be adding $659 to over 200 radios? The encryption to law enforcement. The uh, fire departments voted not to go with encryption on theirs because of the extra cost and some of the fire departments were able to come across some radios now in Crescent and Pecan, uh, different places. So uh, they voted not to do the encryption. So yeah, for clarification for our pricing, um, the regional system, so we, we went ahead and extended, we have the HJC pricing, we went ahead and extended the regional Fort Worth contract pricing that's in place, that's another 20% off of the HJC. Um, that equates to 659 to add AES, DES, and multi-key. It'll be less than that if we just did AES, but we weren't quite clear on the directions that what we should do. We knew we needed to do those two per the sheriff. Um, we don't weren't sure how many quantities to apply that to, so we just listed as a single line item. If we were given, we would like to add it to X number of radios, we could go back and re, you know, visit that as part of a, a bundled discount, but as it stands, we went ahead and extended that trunking um, regional system discount, even though you guys aren't on the system, just as a good faith, knowing that that's your vision of where you want to go to eventually. Uh, but right now it's 659 for the, for the two encryption algorithms and multi-key. And that would be just per how many of our radios. If we were given a quantity, we can go back and revisit and see if we can um, introduce an additional discount. Well, I get the distinction between what Constable Jordan and Sheriff Deeds were talking about here, about the trunking and about being $38,000 total cost to add the trunking now. And if we wait till sometimes later, it could be twice as much. So that's 76,000. But that's apples to apples with only the trunking situation. This is why when we had that workshop, I was trying to get everybody together to say, don't come up here trying to confuse me because sometimes it is confusing to me when you're talking about radios because I don't know anything about a radio. I know how to turn it on and play music, but that's it. So I wanted to have apples to apples and I still don't get a, a, a deal now. Under a five year term, with these other Harris or Kenwood or whatever, it's $131,000, $131,531 a year for five years under the one Harris and Kenwood or whatever that combination is with the trunking. And then yet, if you come around here to Motorola, it's uh, $170,471 plus an added $659 for all law enforcement radios. How many law enforcement radios are we talking? I got it that we, the fire departments don't want it, but how many law enforcement, how many? 35. 35? So 35 times, we'll call it 700. While he's, while he's ciphering over there, uh, on this option B or option A or both, do these prices on the Harris, on the, your proposal, your one page, does that include the encryption? Yeah, everything's figured in. Everything's figured in. And then we got two, we got two price summaries from you, one conventional P25 and one trunking. Yes, sir. But both of them have the encryption? The encryption is listed as unit um, item below there. That's per radio for, we. We weren't quite sure where we wanted to build that in or not, so we can multiply it out, and that's the total, but we can definitely, if we're given quantities, we can give you an actual real price per a bundle. But as we have the HJC contract, that's for AES, DES, and multi-key, that's 824 per the houston Galveston area contract, and then taking 20% off of that for the regional system contract, it brings it to 659 per radio. Um, but, but we weren't quite sure how to apply so, that. Commissioner Angst, there's two different encryption algorithms being used in the county right now. You have AES encryption, and then you have the city, which is using DES encryption. So there's two different encryption keys, you know, systems being used in the county right now as well. So that's why Casey keeps referring to AES and DES, and there's two, two different systems. So it would take $23,065 to encrypt the sheriff's department? Under the Motorola's plan. And Motorola's plan. At 659 times 35. Why are y'all so much higher? Or 
Are we talking the Chevrolet versus the Rolls Royce? You know, there's a reason that we're the industry leader. Uh, there's a reason the regional system has gone with Motorola. Um, we have a pretty large market share in the U.S. Um, our, our, we stand behind our products. You have local resources. The products speak for themselves. Um, they're rugged. The quality's there. The engineering's there. Um, but with that, there is a price. I mean, we're, we're, we don't go after the, to win on the lowest bid. We bring value in the form of the technology, the invent, innovation. We're constantly bringing new products to the market. Um, so I can tell you from, from the guy that's purchased radios from a customer perspective and used these radios in the field as a, in a user, the radio and the reason I went to work for Motorola is the radio is much more durable. It saved my life. It saved countless deputies' lives. I had a car accident. Radio, uh, the car caught fire. Uh, picked up the radio. The antenna is melting off of it, and I was still able to key up and call for help. Um, the durability of the Motorola radio is a second to none, and we we do cost more in that respect. Um, they'll last much longer than the competition. I mean, that's a good point. Is the total cost of ownership is you may save some money on a lesser tier radio, but it will we'll replace some number of that. That I have, fleet? We have radios in, in use right now that have been in service for 20 years. Um, I still have radios that are operating in Parker County on the system that were put in service in 2006. Um, so the, there is a, a, there's a massive difference in construction, quality, build. Uh, those are the types of things that we're looking at. It's, it's you know, buying a Caterpillar versus buying a Komatsu. Um, there is a quality difference between those two machines uh, that, that can only be justified by the end user. Well, with the exponential uh, sophistication that's coming about in communication, you know, all of this may be antiquated in two years. I know when you get in a new car, if you trade off every two years, the car you had two years ago and the car you get two years later. Completely different machines. Totally different machine with all the new bells and whistles that are on it. What, what if something like that happens? Is so, it worth it? Excellent question. So with the way the regional system and these radios are built, they are designed to go through upgrade. So used to, with the older series radios, you would have to, if you wanted to do upgrades, there were physical board changes that had to be made to upgrade that radio. Now it's software. So much like your cell phone, you go through a software update, you get new features and functions. That same capability is built into these radios as well in an effort to try and keep them current so that we don't have that obsolescence uh, come into play very quickly like you do with, with, with other technologies. Um, the regional system, the technologies that's part of the regional system uh, and these radios, every other year they're going through upgrade to make sure that that software and the hardware stays current. Same way with the radios. They'll go through the same firmware updates, software updates to make sure that those radios and that technology stays current. How much does that cost every two years? So that's built into the service agreement with the SUA program that service agreement keeps, that's what that, is, that program is. You mean is there's exactly an additional cool. service agreement with cost in addition to what I've seen here for the, with the so, regional system? Right, for a clarification. So Wait a second. Yes, sir. So let me clarify that point. So the, the radios themselves, they're software defined radios. They, we understand that you know, our customers can't go out and replace these every year. They're designed to last 5, 10, 15 years. We've got to a point now with the technology that we can add new features, there's plenty of uh, horsepower, processing, RAM, memory in the radios. If we do decide to change the product, we make an announcement and then we support that product for five more years. So we don't just cancel a product and it's done. Um, so the radio is designed to be future-proof, designed to add features. Um, we, we came out into Hood County, did a full demonstration, you know, invited the county and, and the city to come see the products, put their hands on it, see the features both now and in the future that these radios will support. And parallel to that, which we're not talking about, is the system infrastructure itself. So the sheriff has two 700 repeaters that are P25, Project 25 capable. The regional system we're referring to, that's a trunk system. At some point, the city, the county may decide to move into that space. These radios are designed to work seamlessly. You get a lot more features if you do go that way with a Motorola radio on a Motorola system. We meet the Project 25 standard, but we also, the standard allows the vendors to actually add more features. It's, it's where you start, it's not where you stop. So Motorola invests heavily into adding significantly more features above the standard. If you go with a non-Motorola standard a radio on a Motorola system, it'll work P25, but you'll miss out on a lot of features. So that's what we came in and wanted to demonstrate to folks. 
um, that SUA system upgrade agreement, the regional system owners do require that. That's a function of what equipment you invest in here. So they do require if you plug in consoles, RF sites into the regional system that it is upgraded every two years so that everybody has the latest, greatest system. Um, and you know, I can't give you a number for that because I don't know what configuration you guys might end up here from a hardware infrastructure at the tower sites. But it's usually five to eight percent of whatever your investment would be. Okay. Ms. Nelda, you want to straighten out Motorola here for the county <laughs> here and make them give us a discount? Well, I don't know that I can do that. But what I would like to say is just judging from what we've heard today, that I think we need to have a meeting without vendors. I think we ha need to have a meeting between our law enforcement people and everyone to decide exactly what you want. And then once you get exactly what you want, you put it out to them to quote on it. And that way it's apples to apples. They, they include anything they want to include at that time. It doesn't matter if it's Harris, Kenwood, or Motorola. I don't, I personally don't have any opinion as what's better because I don't use race radios. But I do think that's the most fair way to do it and possibly to get the pricing to where you might want it. I know that the judge asked and during our meeting that, you know, the bid apples for apples, but to have a bidding, you have to have some specs and well, everybody's bidding the same spec. Right now, we got it all over the place. Exactly. And I think that the decision needs to make, be made. What do you want? Do you want these radios with encryption or without encryption? You can put them as options as long as everybody does that. But they also need to put everything that's included or excluded or that they're going to charge you for. Otherwise, you're going to be paying for stuff you don't realize until a later time. Oh, I know that. That's, I thank you for saying that. Commissioner White, because you remember that was actually my phrase, apples to apples, when we had that workshop with the law enforcement that was in there, and we had representatives of Kenwood and and wherever the other one was in Motorola there, and I said, when y'all come back to us on something, be sure that I'm looking at something so it's apples to apples with what is on here. I think that the summary that the sheriff gave us was everything that you need and you do agree that the two options the way the sheriff brought broke it out had everything that you wanted and thought it needed chad if you go with the option b with the encryption cost and the, the sheriff did trunk. have that right yes sir with the trunking cost yes sir with, uh, with the trunking cost yes so that came out to be whatever it, that yeah that second one what is that yeah and that's for how many radios in with that's for everything we need uh, as far as the law enforcement radios the mobile radios for the and the handhelds for the fire yeah is, is it the 279 radios like the proposal from motorola is it 279 radios for 606 is that what it is well the that's that's trunking that's 279 radios and the other one i only get 165. so i'm, I'm curious to what the number is that's the fire department's radios that's the law enforcement radios that's, that's what i couldn't tell them yeah so that's bottom. anyway i just wanted to no that's what i said back in the deal i wanted to because i yeah. it's easy when you go down to buy a car, and I use that as another example, you can go down there and buy your new 2020 Lexus, but then there's a 2020 Lexus, and then there's a 2020 Lexus also. And then they said, well, but you know, this has the new Bose system in it, and then we got a new navigation system that's a lot better than the other Lexus 500, 550 SL. Well, I, I don't know, want with, any of that. With cooperatives, they can be different in price depending on the cooperative you use. And I get that. And it's, it's my role as the purchasing agent to try and channel us to do it as inexpensively as possible. So, Well, when you get the same features, 
Exactly. Like on the deal. Motorola's their big selling point here is that it's more indestructible. And I'm saying after five years, you're going to probably chunk them away. That's why when I buy an appliance, they say, well, you want the extended warranty for five years? I says, no, because I'm going to probably throw it out in five years. I don't want the warranty. Right. I think that's a gimmick. I didn't want that. I want everybody to find out what we're doing. It looks like, I don't know if we have it or not. Can you tell by looking at it? You're the purchasing agent. <laughs> no. I don't use those radios. I have to rely on them to tell me what they want. What do you think? I mean, I don't know if we... Well, uh, you made a very good, you know, analogy. I feel like I am in a new car dealership. You know, I, and it's nothing, nothing, you know, I, it's just there's so many things. There's, there's so many moving parts to this. Absolutely. That it's hard for me... I can you know, tell you, I, and I'm seeing, I'm seeing these different, you know, it's like, okay, is that app, you know, I, I need a spreadsheet no, or something. Exactly. And I can tell you, regardless of vendor, there are thousands of different ways to build an individual radio with today's technology. And so that spec sheet has to be very specific in calling out each line. And that's even when we do individual quotes for radios, we call that individual line of each bit of software that's quoted in there for whatever agency that we're doing so that they can see that. Because there are so many different variables in building this. And, and the judge is absolutely correct. It can be exactly the same car, same model, same chassis, but what you put inside of it can be very, very different. And that's regardless of manufacturer. So can the sheriff and Chad and Delta and everybody get together and build the specs? Would that be? We've done that. It's already been done. We've done that. That um, the, dip, the discrepancies in the Motorola is if we're going to go with Motorola, then we need to go with Motorola, and, and, but we've already spent a bunch of money on Harris radios, Kenwood radios, because um, I've been trying to piece this together a little at a time. So that's some of the discrepancies. I know for the future of things, Motorola has the majority of that system for the Fort Worth system to get involved in. I'm just trying to get to where we can all talk right now. Um, the trunking cost, um, so we don't have to duplicate a bunch of things, just get filled in the blanks that we haven't already done, get everybody up to the same standard, same speed, then go with that second option, option B, for that 606,000, whatever I just read off that number. And it's the same number of radios. I need it's 279 for 606. Encryption. So did y'all so, bid the same amount of radios? Yes. They counted them up again. It's 279 radios with encryption for 606 on the one proposal. And on the Motorola one, it's uh, where it's at, but you still got to add the encryption on theirs, which is the, the second P25 trunking option that's on theirs. So there's your difference. They are apples to apples. Yep. And on the second sheet, then I did do comparison on some of that or all of that on the bottom of that second half of that sheet. Um, there's a lot of enhancements that can be done with the Motorola system. My dispatch center is like two years old. I can't see redoing it already. It's working. I can't, like I said before, I can't look you guys in the eye and say, hey, let's spend a whole bunch of extra money right now. And, uh, but we need to just be able to communicate and get everybody on the same page. So my recommendation today is to go with that plan B on that financing thing, if you want to go for the financing at the total cost with the trunking, $606,481.95, and that includes installation of the mobile radios, that includes the trunking on the law enforcement radios, includes everything that we need to get us up um, to that higher standard. And that's only $131,531 a year for five years. If you go with the financing, yeah, I, and along the financing, I did That's talk. That's fifty grand finance fee if you do that. So don't like financing. Okay, let me ask you. I mean, the way I figure it, there's two hundred eleven thousand dollars difference in the two bid if you're bidding the same radios and the same in your apples for apples. Yes, sir. sir. Just on that comment, uh, yes, sir. You know, apples to apples as far as the encryption and trunking, it's just the products aren't necessarily apples to apples. There's different tiers. Um, 
and again, it's I just want to make that point back to the caterpillar and you know so on and so forth. It's just you, you buy certain things for certain reasons, but it's there are different uh, there are different quality and different uh, features and functionalities with models that you buy. So it's not just about trunking and encryption. It's it's about what you're actually what model you're purchasing. It's like a Tahoe versus a Suburban, right? You're getting something more with the Suburban. It costs more. It's it's still a Chevy, but it's a different it's a different model. So I just want to make that clear. It's a there's reasons for the cost differences of the different tiers. But as far as range, let me tell you, if I'm out in the field and I'm a police officer, as far as range, clarity, something that I need to get by and perform my duties as a police officer, what's the difference between what so, Kenwood and what the sheriff so, put together and recommended so versus I'll, what advantage does Motorola have? Is it worth, what is it, 200 and some odd thousand dollars? Can't answer that for you. I mean, this is a, it's a value proposition that only you guys can answer. I'm a classically trained engineer, a double E, MS double E. I've been an engineer for about 20 years with Motorola. Our receivers perform better. Our products perform better. It's going to give you more range. It's going to give you more clarity. It's going to give you louder audio. It's a better product. We, better we weren't afraid. We brought the product out, demonstrated it, throw the thing in water, run over it, catch it on fire. They're videos online, but I can't answer that value. I can't answer if that's enough for the 200,000. I can't answer if you're going to have to replace some of these other radios a couple of times and that 200,000 becomes 50,000 in three years. The radios will last way longer than five years. You don't buy them a chunk of them. I mean, it's an investment. But Judge, during but that, I can't during that five years, you. there are physical differences, um, operating differences as far as how they work, right? As far as receive sensitivity, power, power out in some cases, there are uh, audio differences, more power, you can hear it louder, it's more clear It's more clear in a lot of cases. The noise suppression capabilities of the software of the Motorola radios so far surpass a lot of the competition. So there are functioning, per real, not just fun features to have, but actual actual features that make the radio better, uh, the way it functions. Well, spec well what's disturbing to me is that me here, here, who I don't know anything about radios, I'm the one who had to bring it up and says, what are the inherent differences? I'm the first one here today that said, is it range, clarity? Uh, what is it that right. makes y'all think that your product is worth a couple of hundred thousand dollars more? Because we have to be responsible here to, we're good stewards, and I think all the commissioners are for the county taxpayer sure. money, and that's what we want to make sure of. Absolutely. How do we justify over $200,000 for the same functionality. At least they function the same. Everybody talks to everybody. Everybody's going to be using them in an emergency. So why, you, you need to tell me why we right. need to come up with an extra 200 plus thousand dollars to buy a motor auto product as it going along with what the sheriff and the constable is telling us will do the job just Right. Well, for Hood County. Hey, Delton. So, let me. Ask, can I ask you something? Yes, sir. Have you this option B that the sheriff is recommending? Are you on board with that? I just got this paperwork yesterday late. I don't know what the option B is that you're discussing, sir. Okay, thank you. How about you, Chad? It does include the trunking and the encryption that we need. Yes. Yes. Okay, so the question if, is, if are you're you trying to get to the minimum, and, and, and the difference between the two, and, and we can talk about it, even uh, Motorola is the, the industry leader in this. Motorola is the ones that, when it comes that they need to reprogram some channels, well, they can hit a keystroke on a computer, and it does it automatic on Motorola's. On the other ones, you've got to bring every radio in, you've got to plug them in and do, all, you know, do it that way. It's a little different. Um, there, there's lots of differences between the two uh, in the industry, and that's why a lot of them go... And, and you look in law enforcement in a lot of places uh, for what you get for what you spend. But ultimately, when it comes dollars to dollars uh, of what you have to spend and what's available, that's the decision that y'all make. And, and uh, we brought those to you with those recommendations of where those are. And, and B is the option out of those two that has the trunking uh, to, to match apples to apples with a Motorola as far as 
uh, functionality of uh, frequencies and trunking and encryption. I'll give you one example that maybe could relate to the true system. So take a coverage area, right, of when you get either today's system or the future system. If that's here, right, if there's a fringe area, which there always is a fringe area of coverage where it gets weak, the received sensitivity differences in the radios between ours and competitors, we will, our radio will prove, it pro it's proven, it's mechanical, it's, it's, it's the way RF works. It will work in those areas comparable to competitors that don't. So if you've got a, a deputy in that area, it could be the difference of it working or not. And that goes back to the, to the point about you can't put a cost on that, right? It's, a, it's, it's more of a, it's not a feature, right? That's just the radio is better. It operates better. Um, and that's just one example of so, many. Yeah, and, and just be respectful of your time. 200,000 is a lot of money. We're not here to try to win it on bottom dollar. Bottom, I mean, we gave you our most aggressive price. We honestly did. We feel our product's better. It's superior quality. It's future proof if you decide to join the regional system. We gave a whole list of features that only we can provide in that scenario. Um, but we get it. I mean, it's a decision you guys have to make and the value has to be seen. Um, we did our best to give you the most aggressive pricing that we have available to us. but. Um, you know, with that said, I think that's, you know, back to you guys decide and however we can help. If there's more information you need, um, see more products, solutions, or whatever, just let us know. Thank you. Judge, I think we ought to go with option B and just, Becky, do you want to, uh, you want to just buy these outright? Yes, sir. So you, you want to do the 606,482? Yes, sir. There is a time factor with getting the law enforcement all on the same page. So um, if we could order the constable radios would make a difference. We can do that. Okay. Uh, so the uh, Chad's one, you want oh, you you 10 of them, right? Yes, that includes all, all the officers and the vehicles. Yes, sir. How much is that? Yeah. We had that before, and I don't know if their price has changed. Forty-five thousand dollars, something. Right. Forty-five, like 45 or forty-eight thousand. The handhelds on, on the one that they gave us back in May was $40,027, and that includes the trunking feature at $410 on the trade-in radio. So we're going to, we, some of our older ones, uh, we'll make sure that we have listed out for purchasing to remove off the county and uh, trade those in, and it reduces that to $410 on the encryption feature for a total of $40,027. Dollars and twenty cents on that bid. That's these are the handhelds only, correct? The grand total that I've got, and if he trades in some, that it'll be a little cheaper. And this includes the remote speaker mic, and the trunking, and the everything. Oh, just a minute! I, I put in the wrong one. No, that's not correct. <laughs> I got too many numbers. Let me refigure. And that's that's the lowest, but I'm sure that that's also the next based off what he's had. Because they gave him a totally separate one and discounted it.
if that mobile's in. That's everything. $61,199.40. That's mobiles and uh, handhelds according to the sheriff's numbers. 61. 61? Yes. So. That's for all the constables. That's the constable mobile radios installed and the handhelds. All four. All four precincts. So not to exceed $61,200. So we kind of switched from the whole, the whole caboodle to we're going to get, the, I'm, you kind of catch me up on where we're at with this. We're just doing the constables? We, I can, we can handle the constables now in our current budget, in our capital now. monies. Okay. The other has to be budgeted for. That's not feasible right now. We're at the end of the year. We don't have that money in capital. But if this company will work with Roger, he can order them not to be delivered until after October 1st to get this going. And I can also budget a down payment if I need to for the rest of them. But I can budget the 61-2 to get the constables going on their radios. How are we going to order this if the money's not there? I can make a down payment on them and it will be there October 1st. So how are the POs going to work? That's your problem. <laughs> we'll work that out, Nelda. We can get it worked out. But I don't, I, and they may agree that to wait until October 1st. I don't know. I don't know where the, where the pricing if there's going to be an increase if we don't do it all now. But Roger and I can work together and get this figured out along with Nelda. But I do have enough to get the constables their radios now to get this started at this price with what they need and what they want. So we just need to make a motion then to buy 10 radios and handhelds for six, not to exceed $61,200. And give Roger permission to... And, and give Roger to or the sheriff permission to uh, explore option B and see what they'll do. Yeah, so the, <clears throat> to get the constable's office, all the mobile, mobile radios and handheld radios and mobile radios installed, that's the $61,200. Um, and then we'll figure out the difference and, and come back. That'd and that be, would come off the 606? Correct. Okay. Judge, I'll make the motion to uh, approve buying 10 uh, radios and get all the radios for uh, the, all four constables uh, for not to exceed $61,200 and to allow the sheriff to uh, work with uh, option B and work out the details of the rest of it. you negotiate that. Do I hear a second? I'll second, that. second by Commissioner Eagle. Okay. All those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed nay. All in three, <laughs> zero. Okay. All right. Thank you, Sheriff. Thank you. All right. That brings us to item number seven, discuss and take appropriate action regarding Hood County Facebook page. Okay. Who is um, IT? Okay, I, Judge, I brought this. <laughs> we talked about this back in September of last year, and I went back and listened to the audio. And there's a we've got a little bit of a misunderstanding, and I just want to make sure we clear this up today. That's the reason I put it on here. Uh, when we talked in September about our social media, we discussed Facebook, and I think live streaming and some other things, but Facebook and our social social media as being a bulletin board type of um, uh, process, in other words, where you, we can post things out there and, and, and give people notice of what's going on. Correct. And how this came to about is I had one of my people in my precinct get on the face, our Facebook page and actually posted a comment. Mm -hmm. 
and then it showed that there were other, nine or ten other comments on there, but they were hidden. Correct. And I was under the understanding that if we disable comments, that there's no comments. So what I'm trying to, what I want to clear up, mm -hmm. is if we can't disable comments on our Facebook page, we need to let we need to let them be open. Okay, I can do that. But, I'll do whatever the court wants me to do. But we, in other words, what you're telling me is that we can't disable comments. Did you know that, Judge, before? No. It was my understanding that it was just to be posting things, not for people to be spreading gossip or their own opinion. If you want to get an opinion, go get your job with Wall Street Journal or something and write you an opinion. But the Facebook was to be a bulletin, like you said, of what our county events that were coming up and giving people notification of what meetings and what everything are. There's plenty of Facebook. If people want to be on Facebook, they have their own accounts and to do whatever they want. But I don't think they should be using the county's Facebook for their own personal opinions. Well, but here, here's, that's what we discussed and that's the way I remember talking about it. That's, but yeah. we can't, he's telling me now so no, you cannot. That you cannot disable the comments. Truly disable comments. You can hide them, but you cannot disable them. Now see, that's different. I, if you're hiding comments, I don't think we should be doing that. If if there if fine. someone's able to go on there and make a comment right now, then we should not be hiding them. And if we can't, we need to rethink our position. If if you if you just want to do a bulletin board. We need to decide how to do that because that's what I thought we did. Yeah, that's I mean, I was, it, it is. That it, was my understanding. But if we got, if somebody's commenting, we shouldn't be hiding them. No, I don't that's, want to be hiding. That implies something. That's it, kind does. Of a it does. It does. So implying something. But then again, I don't want people from other counties thinking that just because it's on the Hood County, uh, the Hood County Facebook page, that that the commissioner's court or the county judge somehow endorses those comments. I don't want that either. I'd rather take the Facebook so, page off. So that is the issue that we run into. That's it. If you open up comments, you are gonna take anything that anyone wants to put up there. What? Well, that's free speech, isn't it? That is. So, that's again, I have no problem with it. County bulletin the court can board. tell it's me what they want to do. To just post notification of events or meetings. Mm -hmm. that and that's what has been done place. if you go I and mean, look at it. What else of it? I mean, what else of it? If you, I, I, you know, I don't like censorship or somebody watching over me on the thing, and that's what always happens is that somebody finds some way to exploit a good idea. It's nice to be able to put all the county events mm -hmm. for anybody that has a computer to go online and see what coming events or meetings or actions are going to be taking place. But then for somebody just to make comments on our Facebook, I don't care what they are, whether they're white supremacists or Antifas. I don't like that either way. That's the two extremes, I guess, right now. And that I don't is like the either one of those comments on. Drew, is that the only place you can uh, put you know, our uh, information out? I mean, yeah. right now we have it on the website, Twitter, YouTube. I mean, we try to. We don't have to, but I mean, I know a lot of the individuals in the county use it. So. We have a website that you can pull up for meetings and all. Mm -hmm. But that's what we've had before. It's just the website, and then everyone complained. Complained about just when you had a website where nobody else could mm -hmm. could yes. change it. It's sort of like a. PDF where you can't change it except the IT department. If you just put out notification of events or meetings, can anybody add to that? On so the website, every department head has authority over their individual domain. Essentially, like you, the county judge has a county judge portion of the website that only you can. Uh, access or post to or do anything unless you've given you know us permission to give your staff permission to do so for you and of course we have access if you need you know if you call us at two o'clock in the morning hey I need to put this on the website we can do that for you 
Um, and that would be the same for Commissioner White, Commissioner Eagle, you know, Miss Kidd. Um, but no other department has access to another department's portion on the website, if that makes sense. And there's no place for comments. But with the website, there's no place for comments. So here's, here's the summation for me, is the reason I brought this in here today. I was under the impression we were just using the Facebook posting to let people know what's going on. That's, that was the intent. Which and I'm that's totally, being used in a, I'm, right now. I'm absolutely fine with that. And, uh, but like I said, when I found out that we cannot disable comments, mm -hmm. here's, our pro here's what we got. We either let comments go and let it, and open them up where they're not hidden, or we do something else because I don't want to be hiding comments. I agree. Can't you just put a disclaimer that says all comments disabled? He just said we can't. I thought you said that we can on each one, like the judges section of the Facebook that nobody else can. That was the website, Judge. That's, That's the, website. the website, not Facebook. That's not Facebook. And that was the rabbit hole initially. Well, I was up here originally talking for so long. It's, it's the rabbit hole we go down. I mean, the alternative, of course, and no one likes my alternative, is to actually hire a PIO position that actually, that's all they do is media for the county. And they respond to every person that comments. But no one likes that. Well, I don't, I'm not sure. <laughs> but I'll do whatever the court yeah. wants me to do. You know, we, we all thought, like they've said, we thought we were just going to put out meetings and, and important notices. We didn't know you were going to be able to. Well, I did bring it up comment. about not posting comments or hiding them originally. So if we take Facebook down, we still have the website where we could put out notifications of meetings. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what the website's like being that. used for right and now. Just absolutely. take off the Facebook account. I will that's do it. That's the only way you can do it because you can't just put out. Once Facebook. you open up meetings, I, I, I mean agree comments. With Commissioner Eagle, that I don't want to have a Facebook site up there where you have to hide comments on it. It's got to be totally transparent on the deal. But then again, I don't want to sponsor somebody's opinion that makes it look like that it's official Hood County's position on your opinion. I'm not going to, I don't want that. I think I want to make a motion that we just remove the Hood County Facebook and just continue to post meetings and events and other notifications on the website. Okay, I'll do whatever the court wants me that's, to do. That's my motion and to get rid of that Facebook page altogether because it's no way that you can keep anybody from making comments on that Facebook. Page. Correct. Right? Correct. If but that's, that's all social that's, media. I don't know anything about that, but if that, then I trust you, Drew, that that's the case. So if and that's, that's the all case, that's move. That's that, way different from what this council has decided back in September of 2019. That's all. And all three of us agree all on social that, that media, that though. All social deal, media can make comments. A form for everybody in the county or not even in a county. You don't even have to be a resident of Hood County to make a comment on the Hood County Facebook page. Correct. Am I right? That's correct. Well, it's a free for all. It would no, be a free for all. Go, yeah. I want to be interesting. I want to with I want to withdraw the yeah, free feel for all, somebody all in Milwaukee or Chicago comments. making a comment yeah. about Hood County. That is well, correct. You're saying what a wonderful judge we have in Hood County. So That's right. Yeah. I don't even want somebody from there making that comment either. <laughs> judge, it'd probably be best if the motion was to remove this from all social media. All what social media can be commented on. That's why I said that. I know I didn't. It's on Twitter and YouTube and other areas that can be commented on. Correct. But it's not on our 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 Facebook page. It's not, but it's still the county government. And so anybody can make a comment on YouTube when they're watching our live stream or our recorded streams. Anybody can make a comment on YouTube. <laughs> yeah. or Correct. Or Twitter or whatever. Yeah. yeah. But they're not they're not making it on. Hood County's Facebook page. That's, that's, what, that's what I don't want. I don't want anybody saying anything bad about Don Lenny and the way he runs his yeah, road off. We have everything. Oh. Yeah, I was going to say every. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. 
Okay, so we have a Facebook, we have a Twitter, we have a YouTube as well that we all post to. Everything that Jay gives us for, you know, Dr. Blocker stuff, um, any department head that, you know, calls or texts me, say, hey, I need you to post this about our department to the public. They're all under Hood County. Yes. All of them can make, people can make comments. So after I'm done videoing this, I will go back and edit and post it to YouTube. Anyone can make a comment on YouTube about how the court acted, how we acted, how I acted. It is what it is. That is social media. That, that is the rabbit hole you jump down when we do social media. But that's Hood County YouTube or, or just YouTube? Yes. Ugh. Hood County's YouTube. All YouTube. All social media. Anyone can make a comment. But there's right. nothing you can do about that. It's a difference between having the the Hood County Facebook page making a comment that goes on the face Hood County's Facebook page. I mean it's the same thing with Twitter and YouTube. It's the Hood County Twitter, Hood County YouTube. It still has our seal. It still says Hood County. Well, let me ask them. I've well, watched court on YouTube, but mm -hmm. I haven't even got on Kenny's website. Am I wrong? Yeah, you're on it when you go to the YouTube channel. Yeah, we post all the YouTube okay. stuff at the front of the page. I'm not so everyone can guy. just go right to it, make it easy to find if someone wants to review the footage. My, my the point, court. Judge, is I'm, I'm kind of go either way on it. The point is I just wanted everybody to understand that this was, I mean, it was brought to my attention. Somebody called me up and said, hey, there's, you got comments on your Facebook page, but they're hidden. Well, we're a government entity, and that's not, you know, we, we shouldn't be doing that. Correct. And it that's the first was, I knew about it was, well, it was my understanding, when I called you. Yeah, it was my understanding back in September, you know, we brought it up and discussed it, and the idea was because of, like you said, Judge, anyone can just jump on there and say and do whatever. That's why we were not, we were going to hide everything. Well, I didn't catch the hide part. I didn't either, because hiding is like a subterfuge of some I understand. kind. I just don't like that. I just don't like the sound of that. But well, why didn't anybody say, well, to me it's a difference. If I see something on YouTube, I kind of read that with the idea that that's somebody's personal opinion about something, or on Twitter. That's their personal stuff. Same Somehow if they're making a comment on a Facebook page, I'm kind of thinking that's more looking like they have kind of some authority from the counties doing that. Is it not? Am I just mistaken? We're all, I mean, across all social media, we're representative, again, against Twitter and YouTube, if you can add to it. Yeah, so Judge, just real quick, what I wanted to interject is, so on Facebook, anybody comments, it doesn't show in any way that it looks like that's a comment we're making. It's got a name of the commenter attached to it. So really there's no way that somebody could see a comment on a post and think that that's a Hood County opinion from somebody that's on, you know, the commissioner's court or an elected official because it clearly shows that, you know, the person that is making this comment with their picture. So it's very easy to go through and see that, you know, it's not you making that comment or somebody that has any affiliation at all with Hood County outside of living in it. Now here's, here is a question. That it, let's just say we go, okay, we'll just leave Facebook up, and, but we're going to let comments be what they are. That's if somebody gets out there and, well, see, that puts you in a position, you know, because it's like, it's like if I've got my own Facebook page, this is my understanding, and I get somebody coming on there that's just really, I don't, whatever, for whatever reason, as a person, I can block that person. Correct. But I'm not, I'm not even sure we should, if somebody's getting out there and commenting that we could block them even if they were abusing it. Ah, man, this is an interesting uh, conversation here. No, I mean, could you could we do it? Yeah, but you're running into that. Are we violating some of the civil rights that's by right. preventing them? Uh, that's to have, right. So, and you know, and that was the one thing that I was thinking when you bring up on disabling comments versus hiding them versus whatever. To me, there's no difference between having them hidden and having them disabled. Either which way, you're preventing a comment from showing. Now, with them hidden, you're letting that person voice their word. It's just not seen. 
but I think that going and fully disabling comments is taking it too far and fully going against somebody's rights to speak. Well, I disagree with that. I think we can use, uh, if we were using that for a posting bulletin board, if I go, if I go to the judges right outside the judge's office where many postings have happened, Mm -hmm. and they get date stamped and then posted on the bulletin board because that's a legal requirement for certain things to give notice. It's not a comment board, it's a posting notice. That's how I looked at what we were doing. We're just posting an information out there for the county to go look at. Correct. And only when I called you the other days when I found out we have comments, this says comments hidden. Well now he's the, that puts Drew in the position of being the master of comments. And I, you know, it's like if if you can't turn comments off, then you either you just need to leave them on, or take, you know. What do you? What well, do you? We put. A, excuse me, one second. Can we just put a disclaimer and said that this is not for comments. This is informational only. Because I mean, that's I think make, where the packet on Dean Facebook was going or earlier. I mean on uh, Twitter or YouTube. Huh? Yeah. That's all you'd be doing, right? Is what? Inviting them? No, well, yeah, well, probably. <laughs> yeah, I really now, you tell me I can't do something, now I really want to do it. Owen, what do you do when somebody's just in there just cussing away? So, I mean, really, I mean, it depends on how y'all want us to tackle it. In my opinion, if they're going to be sitting there throwing racial slurs, all kinds of stuff like that, then I would just straight up remove those posts. But otherwise, I, you know, really, I've not seen anybody go that far. As far as some stuff, there's been, you know, a little bit of, you know, bickering and stuff like that, but I've not seen anybody go that far yet on any of the social media posts. And I really doubt anybody would, but you never know. Some people are so a little you weird. Drew monitor this I go through and, you know, me and Drew will take a look. I'll go through and look at some of the comments sometimes just to make sure, you know, that because the problem is, so say you do comment and if it's hidden, if you tag somebody in it, that other person can see it regardless of whether it's hidden because they're tagged in it. So I go through to make sure that somebody is not abusing that in some way to go through and, you know, harass somebody on there. But like I said, I've not seen anything really close to that. Yeah, because they're hidden. Because they've got them hidden. Who's hiding? Facebook. Facebook. Facebook? Yes. Because you instructed them to? Yes. That's a parameter? Yes. I see now. I understand. But they get to see it. Yeah, but they get to look at them. The, the administrator gets to see them. Now, who's hiding it? So Facebook has an option where it will auto-hide any comments that contain certain words. And so the way that the Facebook has always been set up before me and Drew even began doing anything with it really, is it's just a, you know, 20,000 word list containing words like of and the, you know, and all that. So essentially, since we can't disable comments, that's how you prevent, that's how you, in a loop around way, disable them. So Facebook is going through and seeing, okay, if this comment contains any of these words, then it is just automatically flagged and hidden by Facebook. So if they consider it offensive, they... No, we have to put in that list. So it oh, is you have just, to put in list. Okay. yes. So we just, like I said, it's just, there's a lot of places that are like that where it's the same thing. It's just a banned word list and they do the same thing because sometimes you can't disable comments and that's really the only way you can do it. Let me ask you this, how many comments do you get between commissioners going on a two week year of time on our Hood County Facebook page, how many total comments do we average in a two week So between the commissioner's court, I'd say we'd be lucky if we hit five. How many? Five. Uh -huh. we'll it five it five really today. depends on what's being posted. We'll get more than five today. <laughs> hey, we'll get, well, if we got them, uh, I mean, most of it right now is when we post something that's, you know, factual, like Dr. Blank, it's mostly shared, you know, that, again, that was the intended purpose, is right. they share the information out, and that's generally what it's used for. Um, but yes, there are some times where we might get a comment or two that 
you know, they bicker, you know, people bicker back and forth, but again, it's all hidden. Yeah, nine times out of 10, it's getting shared to, there's private groups like uh, Hood County Breaking News. It gets shared to there and you'll get sometimes into the thousands of comments on our post, but it's been shared to there. So it's not attached to our post, but to the share in the private group. Five or 10, we could print them off and, and have a section where we reviewed them so that I don't want just our IT department saying that we're, you're the censors for Hood County. You don't want that name and a job either, neither yeah. one of you. As a commissioner's court, do we want that to say we wanted to look at them or, I know, yeah, give well, them to Matt Mills and let him say whether it's legal or not to have them posted. I mean, we'll do whatever the court wants. I mean, my the way that I see it, at, with the amount of comments that we get and making them visible, I mean, the comments will go up because people will start replying to them and all that. But honestly, I think it would probably be best just maybe unblock everything, see how it goes. And the only time comments get removed is if it is something that is just painfully obvious. Somebody that is going around using racial slurs, attacking groups, et cetera, at that point does it get taken down. And then whatever you delete, bring to the commissioner's court. Yeah, and we can bring it to court before we actually delete anything. Just put it down as an item. What was deleted due to such racial profanity? I mean, we're not going to, well, somebody would say that profanity is even allowed under your First Amendment rights, but um, let them, I don't. Let them do it and see what happens. Let's do it. We can do this. Okay. I don't know what we just decided really, but <laughs> it's David. Didn't really decide. We really decide. We really just cleared up what our what the what we just cleared something up that I need. I just want a clarification. Yeah. So we're not hiding. Yep, the, you know, we'll, let's just we'll open it up. Everything. If people want to Absolutely. comment, let them comment. We'll do. And if anything's bad, you if they say yes, something we'll bring that Dave Eagle's the bad, then we'll turn them off. <laughs> Yeah, no, I'll take my motion back. <laughs> uh, quit laughing, this kid. I mean, all right. I'll take my motion back. So the floor is open. You want to just, it's your baby here. Well, uh, there's really no motion. I don't think we have to take any action. Nope. We're, okay. nope. Because I think we've decided, anyway, no, no action. You want the comments unhidden. They're hidden now. Maybe you need to take that action. Too. Well, we never took the action to hide them, so we'll just... Yeah, it's just a misunderstanding. Just a misunderstanding. So perfect. Thank, Thank you, gentlemen. Sorry for dragging that out. <laughs> I thought this was going to be a short commission. Yeah, really. Nothing's on the thing. I know, but you think your watch is stopped? I gotta go to the poll. Your watch is fast. <laughs> okay. She's kind of worked today. Next item: discuss and take appropriate action on the Texas Association of Counties Unemployment Compensation Reserve Refund of 18,756.47 to be placed into the mis miscellaneous revenue fund. Certainly we don't have any comment well, on I like how my commission I like how my commissioner that sponsored me is not here today. <laughs> so <laughs> um, <And that>. um, <laughs> We did do this last year, and what it is is we're already budgeted to pay our unemployment. So when we do get a refund like this, there's no sense in putting it back into that budget because we've already paid out what we need to. So they're giving it back to us. So, so we've always, even last year, we recommended it put into miscellaneous revenue. Okay. Do you agree with that, Ms. Kidd? Yes, I do. Okay. I make the motion that we go ahead and take the refund of $18,756.47 and place it into the miscellaneous revenue fund. I'll second that. Okay. Second by Commissioner Eagle. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries 3 0. Next item. Discuss and take appropriate action regarding the purchase of 15 air packs from capital projects at a cost of only $84,000 and 15 air packs from the fire marshal budget at a cost of $84,000. Ms. Kidd. Judge Commissioners, we talked about this in the meeting with the fire departments. We talked about being able to help them because we haven't 
been able to purchase air packs, and I, I believe we bought some in two th early 2019. We've had numerous departments be very generous and turn over unused travel budget, which was which allowed us to buy an additional 15 air packs. So they needed 54, we're able to provide 30. I think that's a wonderful thing the county's doing for the fire departments. And I'm yeah, just and really I, happy that y'all were in agreement. I want to thank every department that looked into, and I think especially everybody's travel and educational uh, deal. I know that like the county judge's office, we had like $4,000 that mm -hmm. I've had meetings and Beth and Alicia may have meetings that were supposed to be attended in March that were rescheduled to May, that were rescheduled to August and then finally canceled. So we're not gonna use the money and that money is a lot better spent furnishing air packs to the volunteer firefighters which really need this and fighting fire. So. I want to thank every department that did that. Most departments did refund their education and travel. Yes, I don't sir. Think only only a handful didn't respond. Okay. All right. Well, if there's any place else that any other department would like to do it, that, that would be appreciated. Yes, sir. Maybe I can always move that money into the fire marshal's budget and purchase another one. We need at least $5,600 per air pack. So that, that buys one. Okay. And if you'll just approve this, we'll get that ball rolling. Okay, do I hear appropriate motion? Thank you very much. Yeah, I'll make, I'll make the motion to, uh, regarding the purchase or that we purchase 15 air packs from capital projects at a cost of $84,000. Now that capital projects is all the, the different departments total, right? No, sir. That's the other one? Okay, all right. All right, I'll start over then. Uh, a motion to purchase 15 air packs, or 30 air packs altogether, 15 to be paid for out of capital projects at a cost of $84,000, and 15 air packs to be withdrawn from the fire marshal's budget at a cost of $84,000. Second. Second. $168,000. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries 3 0. All right, item 10. Discuss and take appropriate action regarding moving furniture and other items out of Constable Office currently in the Justice, Justice Center to the third floor in the historic courthouse and also the authorization of installed electronic deadbolt on interior door on the third floor of historical courthouse. Hmm. Judge, I brought this to uh, the, the court to talk about. Uh, I've, I've talked with Jay Riley and he's been trying to find a local mover to move the furniture uh, up to the third floor of the uh, courthouse uh, for a constable. Well, he's been unable to find anybody in this town that's really wanting to do it. One uh, company said, well, because of the staircase only being 26 inches wide, uh, they'd, they'd want to remove the rails. Well, I know we can't do that, you know, so I was, you know, I'm trying to figure out what would be the best best avenue for this. And, you know, and then as far as the, uh, the, uh, the electronic deadbolt, you know, it was not authorized through uh, Jay or uh, Steve Siegler, so I guess the constable put that on the the uh, door theirself. Uh, I don't know if that's a good idea to be touching the historical courthouse like that, uh, but we got to figure out something to do with uh, how to get this furniture or see if there's another office available. You know, I know that there's some at, in Katie's office, uh, I mean, uh, Oh, Annex uh, 2 that are available right now. Uh, it's just trying to get the furniture up to the third floor seems to be the biggest problem right now because you, you pretty much have to lift it over your head to get it up there and this, this desk don't come apart uh, except in a uh, couple of sections. Uh, 
I just want to see what the court thought about it or, you know, see what we need to do because I, I know that the constable wants his stuff up in that uh, third, third floor. Let me tell you this. I was going to, uh, some people approached me at Christmas time about, this is my first term into it, about adding some stuff around the courthouse. And of course, I didn't know that at the time. And I kind of stepped into it by agreeing to it. And then I had the historical commission all over me. And this was not making any drilling, moving, anything. So I'm going to tell you this. This is not going to be allowed to remove any stairwell deals. It's not going to be allowed to be drilling any holes in any of these old doors or anything else. In fact, when that historical commission hears about this, they're going to be really upset. You know, Judge, I don't know if they drilled into the door or not, but I know there is an electronic uh, deadbolt up there. Uh, uh, I just think, you know, me personally, I don't think you should be touching the courthouse without the proper notification or permission. And I don't know what that is, but uh, I know that we we are over all the buildings, and I just want to bring this uh, uh, to the court's attention that, you know, in case something happens, uh, you know, because right now nobody can get into that office. If Jay, if a fire happened or something and you can't get a hold of the constable, I don't know. Maybe you just, I mean, I hate to kick the door in, but that may be the only way you go get into it. Uh, and there's, you know, you just never know why maintenance should get in there. Hey, are you on the Historic Commission? Have you ever been on it? I was nominated for it, but on the last time they met, but I did Chad Ramsey got that spot instead of me. Oh. Alicia, Alicia, I'm on this You're okay with moving stuff then, right? You're, you're okay with taking these railings off and drilling into these old and too hardcore? Let me tell you something. I think I know Christy Massey well enough that she's not going to be very thrilled to hear about this. Now, do you know what's entailed in taking the rail off? I mean, it may just be maybe a couple of bolts, or I don't know. Hey. So it's a cast iron. It's a cast iron railing. It could be just bolted. You unbolt it and pull it off and do it and put it back on. I don't know. Fashion. They don't want you putting nails in walls. They don't want you doing anything. And you have to have their permission to do it. So whoever did that didn't have anybody's permission. At the very least, they should come to court and ask you guys. <clears throat> well, I'm going to tell you what really kind of concerns me. That fire concerns me. We're, we're good. It's doable. Third floor was an operation. Each had inmates new furniture. Sure. They were experts at removing stuff from buildings. <laughs> you know the the only the, mowing the grass every day. <laughs> the issue that I have, you know, is if we if you know one of Jay's people are trying to move this stuff up there, uh, if something happens, it's going to be a there could be a insurance claim because the stuff's heavy, you know. Uh, Even if you get it, somebody locally to do it, they are going to have to have insurance to do it. That needs to be a must for them to step foot on our property and move anything. Otherwise, we're opening ourselves up for all Yeah, I know that he asked for uh, $1,100, $1,500 to buy a desk and stuff. But, you know, we... If you buy a desk that you can put together, you still got to take 
the cabinet lockers and all the other uh, articles up there. So we're going to have to have a moving company. And the only way I know to find one is go into Fort Worth, Jay. Right now, the local, I got, I talked to two different ones. One that didn't want to do it, period. The second one, he wanted to do it if we took the rails off. And he, and he was still skeptical whether he could get up that narrow step. The problem with it being we got an elevator, it goes up two stories, but then we got a carry. The problem getting the lockers and everything through there, we can get it up the elevator. That's no issue. Um, then we have to carry it all the way across the courtroom and through the narrow, the doors at, at behind the bench to, and then get to the set of steps. Otherwise, we have to carry it up three flights of steps up and those steps on the east side are 26 inches about clearance. They're not like the ones on the west side. The west side's wide and you have more room. So if you don't want to carry it up three flights, you have to carry it up one flight anyway, but you have to go across the courtroom and maneuver around everything. So that was what they weighed out when they looked at it. And that's the way they were going to do it was go up that last set. So they wanted to pull off two sets of rails, which would be the first landing on the second, pull the rails off on the, going up to the third. I don't think we ought to touch anything in there, especially the rails. I don't know when they've came off or when they were put on. I'm unsure on that. I. Been well, that's told. another liability issue, removing the rails, and then somebody injures themselves, falls down or something, then you really got a liability issue. Is you know? Is there another office there available on the second floor? Is there any well, I don't know. I tell you what, it's going to have to be, I don't want something like uh, Commissioner White just said, if a fire breaks out in that office and nobody can get into that office on the deal. And now that I didn't know about this until I saw the, the agenda, I'm glad you brought it up, Commissioner White, but I'm thinking that we're going to have to inform the State Historical Commission about it and see what they're going to want to do about it. I think that's what we have to do. I want to do full disclosure on this thing. I'm like, but Commissioner Eagle brought up later, I'm not for hiding anything. If it's done, we got to go ahead and take our licks on this deal, but uh, uh, we're going to have to let them know about it. So Alicia, you're here. You need to get the local historic commission together. How many members are on the committee? The, the Granberry one. About six. six. About six, yeah, eight. And then there's, is there a representative from the local Deal to the state, or do y'all know who we? James Dickens. James Dickens is a. Well, we need to ask him about this thing because they may want to preserve that deal. They surely don't want to have some office that we can't get into. Do you have master keys, like for my office and the assistant? You got a master key that can yes, lock Yes, sir. Anything. I have a key to every room in that building with the exception of that one. And is it to make an electrical lock, if I'm assuming right, did somebody have to drill into the door? You know, I'm not familiar with the type lock that was put in there. It's a code lock. It's quite possible they could have, it had a regular deadbolt type lock, just such as your office has. There's a, there's they could good. have took that out and put it in in place of that. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't All really right. know. There's a good chance that's what we'll happened. Right. We'll but I mean, the, it just, you know, in my opinion, it needs to go back to what it was, you know, and use the key. I mean, uh, yeah. I know Commissioner Eagle has a lock, you know, the same deadbolt, and he doesn't have a problem. Using yeah, and actually, you know, it, it, it's the way we operate on that. We, we're we not going to go into anybody's office unless we tell them. Uh, I know I've got. I've surprised uh, uh, 
Officer Briley before. I wasn't sure he, I didn't know he was in there, and I unlocked the door and opened the door. <laughs> so you better watch that yeah. office, then. Yeah, we got a little. I got startled. <laughs> he didn't seem to mind, but it startled me. <laughs> you know what? But, you know he's only a Texas Ranger. Yeah. He can only draw and shoot in about a half a millisecond. <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm uh, fortunate. <laughs> What brought it up to me is when Jay was having the trouble getting the issue of the uh, furniture up there. So I walked up there, and that's when I saw the lock on the door. You know, uh, you know. Uh, I think we need to put the door like back to what it is, and then you know, see if either way it's going to cost some money to uh, to buy a desk and to. You know, if, if y'all's guys can't get them up, get the furniture up there, uh, it's not we'll find we, another office. Yeah, it's not yeah. that we mind doing it. It's the yeah, fact we'll that we just... Buy a different kind of modular desk or something. Yeah. Well, I know. I'm he, glad you brought it. I know you buy them, you know, and want to take part. I think there was a request for like $1,000, $1,500 to buy a desk, but... We still that still don't solve the issue of all these lockers and stuff and filing cabinets. That the got filing there. cabinet and evidence locker, I believe, is correct. I just don't think nobody heard. Let's table this and let's just talk to make proper inquiry to everybody that's involved, the state, the local, the constable whose office is there, Jay, everybody else. Let's try to get and easy, quiet resolution of this, okay? Thank you all very much. That, I'm on journey this commissioner's court, thank you.